And we'd like to bring you to Torrey County Council meeting for this session. We're just setting it up here. Yeah. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. We would like to bring the Torrey County Council meeting for Monday, June 12th, to order. Just prior to that, we want to acknowledge this meeting is being held in the Unimog, one of the seven traditional districts of the Mi'kmaq and the ancestral and territory of the Mi'kmaq people. So, having said that and recognizing that, uh, you have received the agenda that has been circulated to you. Are there any additions or deletions to the revised agenda? Sure. So we're moving it around. We are. Um, we are. Right under motions and proclamations, we had reference to the water accounts discussion. That discussion we already had in camera earlier this afternoon. So that would be deleted from the agenda. We also, in our previous original agenda, we. Uh, we had a cancellation from one of the presenters, so that's reflected in the revised agenda as well. So the agenda is as is. With that noted change from CAO, do we have a motion to accept the agenda as circulated, please? So moved. Thank you. Deputy Warden has made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor McNeil. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Andre Minded. Motion is carried. The agenda is approved. The first item on the agenda this afternoon is from the Cafeteria Writers Festival. And uh, here to make short presentation is Rebecca Silver Slater. Welcome back to Council. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you so much for having me here. No, our pleasure. And uh, if you're familiar with the mic, as long as the green button is on and you are, are live, if it's on red, then you are not. So, with that, uh, we're going to turn it over to you, Rebecca. And if you want to take us through your presentation, then we'll open it up for some questions from camp, council, and board of public that may have some interest as well. That sounds great. All right, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for uh, taking time. I know you have a full docket and full day, so I really do appreciate that the, the gift of your precious time today. Um, this it will be the 15th year for the Cata Trail Writers Festival, and over those 15 years. Uh, as I, I think you all know quite well, having been really our first and I uh, think most uh, cherished supporters and probably the funders who know and understand what that people best uh, and who appreciate our audience and, and the purpose and other festival and who we're serving better than probably anyone. But it has been a time of change, uh, some challenges. Uh, but some really important growth, and I'm excited to just quickly go through a little bit about the festival and then talk about how we've come through these last few years and what lies ahead. So, uh, since it has been a little while since, uh, since I last presented to Council, I think the last time was around this time in 2020, when we were just getting our heads around what it meant to present programming in the pandemic context. Um, we have over the last decade and a half, the Cabotrail Writers Festival has been able to build a reputation across the country for excellence and here at home for being a warm and welcoming place for writers, for readers, and for all community members. Our writers have returned to their home cities, home provinces, and to their publishers with glowing reports of what they experienced here in Cape Breton with, of books sold by the <coughs> And, uh, and the kind of audience that waits to welcome them here. Uh, so it's become a festival that for all that we're in a remote corner of the world and a small place uh, that is a place that authors just love to come. And I think this is so important because I often say that because the island has such a rich tradition and heritage in terms of performing arts and music, it can be, and that's rightly celebrated, it can also be easy to overlook what an extraordinary literary heritage we have here. Uh, this is the island of writers from Alistair McLeod to Hugh McLennan, Kate Beaton to Leslie Crew, Rita Joe, so many more incredible voices coming out of this small part of the world. And uh, it's also not just within the pages of published books that these, this 
these kind of storytelling is found, just like fiddling happens as much in the kitchen as it does on stage. Storytelling, I think, is part of the culture of Cape Breton. It's a way of life, and it's part of our community as well as the published authors we're featuring on our stage. So I think it's such a gift to have this space to celebrate that and share it with uh, the world. And we drew from an audience from across the country and beyond because of that. Um, the best-selling uh, memoirist and biographer Rosemary Sullivan uh, described it so well, I think. She came to the Cabot Trail Writers Festival for rest of that <laughs> festival from the Edinburgh Book Festival, which is the largest literary festival in the world. And she said ours was better. Uh, <laughs> she it more. And she said, writers are fed like rock stars. The audience is intensely engaged. The venue is exquisitely beautiful and books are sold by the cartloads. This is what a festival is meant to be a celebration of the imagination and the power of literature to enter our lives and change us. And I think that could stand in for our mission statement. Really, that is what the festival is about, celebrating that capacity of literature and bringing people together to experience it. So it's been a community-driven festival from the very beginning. Uh, I love the story of its origins. It was essentially uh, Gary Walsh, uh, Jeanette McDonald, and other community members in their book club invited the poet George Eliot Clark to read their book club. And within a matter of days, just by word of mouth, they found the hall had been packed with people eager to hear this poet read his work. And they realized that there was a real appetite for this kind of experience here in a place where I think people else were the least expected, and that there was a need for this kind of literary programming. So with some other uh, hardworking community, community members, they built this festival. And it's grown over the years. Uh, at some point, we outgrew the size of the North River Hall space, although we remember it fondly and return it for other events from time to time. We now hold our main events at the Great Hall of the Clans at the Yale College since 2014. Uh, in 2017, the, the board that was serving at that time uh, stepped down and transitioned to a new board uh, with myself uh, coming on initially as a board member and a volunteer, but working towards building our festival's budget so we could expand our programming during the festival weekend and also year round, and also work towards building the capacity to have part time staffing to manage the festival in Rome to be so we would burn out our board uh, as happened with the previous iteration, iteration. And so we were able to do that by 2018. Um, something that I think is an important message for us to get out is who the Writers' Festival is for. I think the words Writers' Festival can sound intimidating or disorienting to people. Um, I think I hear often from people who think it's only for professional writers or people who are reading a book a week or um, some other kind of specialized person. And so what I'm constantly telling people is that the Writers' Festival truly is for everyone because books are about everything and we design the festival to be as accessible and welcoming as we can. Uh, we're not having conversations about grammar and semicolons, we're having conversations about what inspires people and uh, what brings them to the page and uh, the kinds of relationships they, they experience between writer and reader, between inspiration and publication. My number one goal with our festival is to build community between writers and readers, between Cape Breton locals and Cape Breton visitors, uh, and between everyone who comes together for a few hours or a few days to have a shared experience of something out of the ordinary, something beautiful, and something that makes you look at everything in a new way. So the main festival unfolds over uh, three to five days in early fall and includes something for everyone from workshops for professional and published writers looking to hone your craft to readers who just want to know a little bit more about the processes and influences of their favorite writers to lovers of arts and community who just want to come together and hear storytelling and music and meet with other community members. Our programming includes readings, writing workshops, um, author interviews and uh, panels, as well as music. We also bring in, we want to uh, create opportunities to have encounters with this beautiful landscape that we live on. So we have events like outdoor readings and forest walks. Um, we uh, cover, we sponsor and coordinate uh, free author visits and youth writing workshops in public schools across Victoria and Inverness County. 
and uh, we create a space for conversation between old friends and new. And so much more. We're always looking for new kinds of ways to take an angle on how literary, literary arts intersect with our lives, whether it's the history of song and the Gaelic language, or uh, the connection between um, uh, literature and storytelling and traditional Enigma arts, uh, connecting with theater, with food. Uh, we really want to explore this space, all the different ideas and people who are involved in it. And we've had amazing feedback from our audience. Some are told every year what it means to people, whether it's people who plan their trip to Cape Breton around attending our festival every year, seasonal residents who extend their time here to be here for the festival, or locals who get a really special opportunity to connect with their own community of people from away in this experience. So it has been, for us as for everyone, a hairy few years. <laughs> We were able to reinvent ourselves for the 2020 festival and hold a, pro a festival program that unfolded online, on the air, and outdoors. So we worked with our partners in CBC Radio to do a week of programming on the radio, recognizing that that would reach people we couldn't reach online, especially at that time we knew there were a lot of communities that still didn't have the internet capacity to take part in a lot of online festival. We also had a number of digital events. And we also did one outdoor reading event with everyone socially distanced, specifically highlighting Cape Breton writers and musicians to support those uh, literary arts practitioners. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful success and helped us reach some new people, uh, especially beyond Cape Breton, and we were able to double our lineup. And as I say, at a time when the creative industries were struggling, support some artists and amplify their voices. Um, but we were delighted. When the time came, like these are the writers and writers of the future. When the time came in 2021, we were able to shift to, oh yeah, this was our outdoor event at Lake In 2021, we returned to in person programming, but at half capacity, socially distanced with safety precautions in place. And it was a wonderful festival, but because of the restrictions at that time, we had to turn away a lot of people, which was unfortunate. Um, but it was a beautiful festival, and uh, we had some really special events and authors featured. And, uh, and of course, when 2022 came around, we were delighted to anticipate returning to a full capacity festival where we'd hopefully not have to turn people away. Uh, we had some amazing writers lined up and an amazing program of events that I still haven't had the heart to pick up the actual paper program from because the day that it was due to be picked up at the printers, we realized that Hurricane Fiona was around on the same weekend. So we had to make a heartbreaking, very last minute cancellation. We refunded, uh, of course, all tickets and still paid the fees for our writers so that they didn't lose an important part of their income. And, uh, and we hastily reprogrammed as much of it as we could for later in the fall. We did some events and community events in partnership with Celtic Colors. We did the close of their weekend at the Gaelic College. And then we did some events through November, um, including a version of the Friday Night Reading Series that usually opens the festival at the North River Hall. And we saw it as an opportunity to return to the basis of the festival to give back to our core community of supporters and uh, to support that local audience at a time of the year when there's not usually a lot of things like this going on. So it was a little sad, but it was special the way it turned out and the events um, were well attended and, and a great pleasure. However, <laughs> it makes us extremely excited to return in 2023 when surely no pandemic or hurricane will hold us back. <laughs> And uh, we have some amazing writers coming and a beautiful program in the works that we're so excited to announce shortly. Um, I know I'm probably getting close to my time here. Um, I have highlighted a few key facts about the festival. Um, we were, you know, in 2019 and before, we were having a total audience that was typically 1,000 to 1,300. Last year, even post hurricane, when a lot of the seasonal residents and tourists who would normally anticipate weren't here, we were still at about 700. Uh, for attendees. Uh, we also bring uh, author visits to uh, typically in the range of 200 to 300 students across public schools in Victoria County and the West County. Uh, depending on the year, up to 40% of our audience sales from outside of the island. Um, and we showcase usually about 15 to 20 authors and musicians, some from Cape Breton, some from the parts of Nova Scotia, and some from across the country. 
is usually more than 20 unique events. And we also do online events and things in the off season between festivals. So, and uh, we also have a reach of 500 newsletter subscribers and roughly 2,000 social media followers. So, as we look towards our 15th anniversary festival, we are like a lot of arts organizations coming out of the past couple of years facing challenges with rising costs at truly every line item in the budget. Um, and we have been deeply grateful for the support this year and uh, all the other years from the Victoria County Council. Um, it has it has really helped us grow and help us survive and thrive through all of this. Um, we're at work right now in looking at building capacity, both in terms of reinventing ourselves to do more fundraising, more sponsorship, more um, revenue generation to support um, these rising costs, but also build some capacity so we can do more with our year-round programming and begin to plan for our long-term sustainability. Um, this is a quotation I just love from the children's author, uh, Sherry Fitch. It says, once a year in the mystical highlands of Cape Breton, where the colors of the leaves burn crimson and orange, folks gather to tell and listen to stories. There are some who will tell you that during this festival of words, wondrous, strange, and magical things happen. I am one for I was there, and this is so. So I'd like to express on behalf of the Cultural Writers Festival Board and everyone in our organization and in our audience, our heartfelt thanks to you for all your support through this time. Thank you very much. Excellent. So we're going to open up at uh, some council and answer questions, and uh, my arm with you. Uh, hopefully, the no hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> they say you remember a lot of So, uh, is there anybody on this side, uh, Councilor Patterson, and the calendar, or any questions? <laughs> I just want to comment on uh, your brochures. Uh, the artwork is stunning. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's a lovely thing that the, uh, the founders of the festival started where each year we commissioned a different key brand artist to create a feature artwork that we then are able to use in all our promotions and, uh, and also um, uh, um, give away to a lucky audience member at the latest festivals. Mm -hmm. And you answered one of my questions. I was wondering if you had many children's authors or Yes, so we have, uh, we, most years we have at least one writer for, for, for teens or children. We have struggled, we've found, we've done uh, free youth writing workshops at the festival, but the turnout hasn't been great. We think in part because it's so hard getting drives for kids and so on, it's, it's challenging to coordinate. Um, we continue to work on that, but we've also found at this time, and we've talked to festivals even in cities who feel this way too, the best way we can reach the widest audience of kids right now is through the schools because of course that's where they are. So, so that's our main focus, but we do, we're really keen to keep building that part of our programming. I think uh, it's key. And I know in my community, just over the um, 13 years of the where I am, uh, I've seen so many more young people and families moving to the area. I think it's really lovely to make sure there's things in place. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions from that side of the table? We're good. Thank you. We're good on this side. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, I just want to say that I think it's a wonderful thing, the Writers Festival, and that it really impacts all of Victoria County because people come here and then they do trail and they spend time, you know, in the deck and everywhere. So it's, uh, it's, it's great. Um, I just wondered if you could send me that first picture that was on the screen because half my district was in it. <laughs> yeah, thanks again. Thank you so much. Uh, so we have Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor McLeod. Get the award. Uh, yeah, no, great presentation and um, great adaptability over the last couple of years. I, I give you credit for that, but uh, you always say a picture is worth a thousand words. And then when I see the picture of how many people attend or how it lands, it really answered a lot of questions for me. So uh, congratulations and, and good work. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, just congratulations on all your hard work. And I can remember, 
when you first came here, and uh, it was a small festival, and it's grown so much since then. So, congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, I truly do think that is uh, completely a testament to the support of what our audience, but also funders and supporters like like all of you in particular. That's really helped us weather a lot of the uh, storms and, and keep growing. Yeah, no, and I, and I think back to the days that you mentioned with Gary and Walsh came here and was kind of a, a vision and, and, and really since the 15 years, it's one say this at every time we come to council, it's one of the best investments we made as a municipality because it's really, it's grown and, and the reputation and popularity of the just, just continues to be a success. Um, so we, we just collectively want to wish you continued success and uh, continue to apply for grants for the municipality. Yeah, every year we were a little overwhelmed by request issue versus the amount of money we had. So uh, with that, we had reduced some of the, some of the funding that we generally provide, but don't discourage you. Thank you, I'm, I'm really glad, I appreciate those words so much. And, uh, and I'm glad to hear that. I had meant to just check in to make sure there was no concerns about the program, but I certainly understand that everybody's budgets are <laughs> And you, you just mentioned, and not to belabor the point, that everybody's costs have gone up, and I think that's one of the reasons why we were inundated with requests to change part of the business, which is going up for everybody. So, with that, I want to thank you very much uh, for your presentation today. It's excellent, and uh, continue to address the Thank you so very much. And and uh, I, I always try to send out a message each year, but please know that if any of you uh, or your families ever want to take in any of the festival, we'll be honored to have you as our guests. So thank you so much. And the Gala College, you can The Gala College. This year. Yeah, we're going to do one closing event on Sunday evening in Inverness County uh, Center for the Arts and the Rest of the Well, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you so it. Much. So we'll just give uh, Rebecca a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. has a copy of the presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll leave. I brought a few books for this program in case that might be Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So I think we we'll to wait a few minutes for you to set up the next presentation. We're good. Okay, the next thing on council this afternoon, we have a waterfront protection presentation by Steve Goldwing and friends. So welcome, sir. Thank you. We'll just wait a few minutes till we get the documentation of Thank you all very much for uh, having us here again. We have some other members of our committee. I'd like to introduce Terry Kelly on the Waterfront Bedeck Committee. We have Bill Marchant, and we also have Gary Crowd, who is also a Bedeck Village Commissioner. So again, it's always great to be here. This will be a very short kind of overview. Um, I first wanted to give you an update. We're working on the Gateway Project, which I think if you remember, I came here several months ago to present and the county gave us great support for that. The construction for the Gateway is underway. You can see it down on Water Street. But you know, I just wanna say, you know, that project started with $25,000 from the county. And that then allowed us to raise 25,000 from the village 90,000 from ACOA, and we recently got the final piece, an accessibility grant of 23,000. And that's supporting a public washroom. It's supporting uh, paving and parking and cleaning up the parking on Water Street. 
We're having a sidewalk to the Lions Club Ferry. We're gonna rebuild the ferry dock. We're putting a wash sink in for the food bank. And we're actually gonna build a bus drop off. And the final accessibility grant came through uh, to build that. But it started with your support. You know, part of our message is, you know, we see our responsibility on the waterfront. How do we make the waterfront more accessible for all? How does it drive and bring in tourism? How does it create an access to the Verdor Lake? And how does it support our local community and the county? And that's really what our work is focused on. And I know often we're here asking for funding and support. And you know, part of our message is we work really hard to try to maximize that funding and support for everyone's benefit. And I'm really proud of the work we've all done as a committee so far. And I am here to talk to you about, and it is another request, for another, what I think is an important opportunity. And it, you know, we all know the next major project is the boardwalk and we're doing a lot of planning and that boardwalk is vital, I think, to all of Cape Breton because it's one of the few places where people can access the Verdor. And we have, um, we're getting some financial commitments. I think I had mentioned, it's okay to say, ACOA is supporting the boardwalk project in a significant way. We're talking about around $800,000. And we've just recently received a $300,000 grant. It was a provincial grant. It was extremely competitive. And that grant is used for the boardwalk and waterfront projects. And in order to receive those funds, which they would make available to us immediately, we need to have matching funds of $86,000. And, you know, we didn't realize at the outset that we needed those $86,000 at the start of the grant. We thought we were gonna be able to raise money through the boardwalk project to fund it. But they came back and said, no, to be a successful recipient, you need to show that there's $86,000 cash available. So to that end, you know, we spoke to the village and the village commissioners had a, uh, their commission meeting last week. They're willing to support a part of that and they voted to approve to support 31,000 of the 86 and over three years. And you know, my ask to the county is if there's any way the county could support $55,000 over three years. So that would be $18,000 a year. That money unlocks 300,000 that we will otherwise lose. And that 300,000 will be used to design a boardwalk that is indoors the you know changes due to climate change some of the other environmental work we're doing on kidston island to protect the lighthouse it supports some of the scientific work but we were really excited to win that grant it was highly competitive and we did go to other sources i spoke to ACOA and others and you know they're already supporting us significantly there is a chance also that if our fundraising goes really well through the project that we would actually be able to return that $55,000 to the county if we actually didn't need it and or to the village, right? Because we kind of need it early on to unlock it. So, you know, I just wanted to put that forward to you. I know we've asked for a lot. We thought breaking it up over three years could make it acceptable. This grant really kicks off the boardwalk work because we would have 275,000 immediately that we could get started with the plan. Very good, thank you. Short and to the point, that's what we like. And we know the amount that you're asking for. <laughs> and uh, it just as a, a vote of confidence, I can attest to the work that your group has done down around the, the wharf and the waterfront. It's, uh, it's, it's just changed that the whole vibe down there, so. Yeah, the wharf is going great. We have lots of boats coming in. Uh, the economics of the wharf are excellent. That's gonna bring in, you know, real financial return for the village that we will then leverage. So that's going very well. Yep. So to just keep building on your successes. I just wanna open it up to any of the uh, councilors, any questions or comments in regards to this project? Deputy Warden. Yep. It's not a guarantee. It's no, it's not a guarantee. Um, again, we thought that with this grant, the boardwalk is going to take a year, you know, probably maybe more, right? We thought we would have had a full funding cycle to raise the money to show that's our contribution. And they came back and said, no, we need it right away. So I don't want to promise it. Um, 
you know, we're looking for as much county support as possible, but you've got a lot of competing interests and, you know, we're willing to make happen what we need to make happen for these projects. But if we do do very well with the funding, I think it's something we'd want to keep, you know, on the table. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden and uh, Councillor Longba. I just wanted to thank you for your presentation and uh, I haven't been down to see what's been happening down there, but I'm excited to go and see if I see a difference great. from the last time I was down there. Yeah, I'm sure will. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. It's a big yeah. improvement. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor McLeod, any questions for coming? For the presentation, uh, I know it's a good news that you get that money and I understand it's the emergency forget that I, there's no brain to, you know, I'm agree that you have to get that that money. No, every every day you get three hundred three hundred yeah. one thousand dollars, right? Yeah. But yeah. But well, good luck. Thank and you. and it, the project is needed and it's an attraction for tourists for travel around the county. So and the boat. So I see it's, it's a yeah. huge thank you. thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. I'm going to Councillor McDonald and then Councillor McNeil. Yes, sir. A great presentation. You almost sound like a radio host or so. Uh, <laughs> way, uh, put that out. I was just wondering with the. Uh, I know I've, I've been down to the waterfront many times over the summers. So it's busy, it's booming, tourism and everything is there, but do you have a, a total commitment from the village to your project? Uh, uh, um, value for that? Yeah, for this particular one we're speaking yes. of here. Yes, yeah, so the village is committing 31,000 for this 301,000. Um, but, you know, the village has supported other projects as well. The gateway that you supported, the village has supported and other things also. Um, and they will continue to support them, we believe. Great, sir. Thank you. Councilor McNeil, then. Great, thank you. Your mic on. Thank you for the presentation. Now, we see the importance of, of the boardwalk and yeah. the waterfront. I think every councillor does. And that uh, $301,000 that you can leave her by getting this money. We, we know that. But uh, I just want to say, like, like we just went through budget talks too, and, and, and our budget is set. I know, I know it's an emergency yeah. ask, and, and but it it helps council if if these things were done a little bit earlier. That's yeah. That's all. I just want to bring up because our budget is set right now. It, it is a great project, and uh, and uh, we all recognize how important it is. Yeah, and I respect that. And I did not want to have to ask the county for this. You had just supported us. We've done a lot of fundraising in the village as well from the community. And we have to be thoughtful about what projects we fundraise for, what projects we come to you for, you know, and we did look at other sources. We didn't think it would have been right to fundraise for this one. We will fundraise for other projects in the future, Kidston Island, for the boardwalk and so on. We just didn't have time here, you know, and so, but I recognize Actually, that. That's why I'm, yeah. I'm glad you came with the presentation. Yeah. Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you, uh, Morton. Uh, Stephen, good presentation, good project. And I, I know we get in these binds sometimes, but I just go back to Councillor McNeil's uh, comments uh, our budget is set but i guess my question is for our financial people uh, is this doable at this point so who are you directing the question to the cao or who wants to, to answer to respond, <laughs> so as you know your budget is set um and there's a small surplus that was in there so if you're going it's do you, you take peter to rob from paul so if you guys are approving anything, it's got to come from somewhere else. So we got to figure out where else it's going to come from. So it, your answer is, is it doable? Could be, we just have to, we have to maybe not do something else. So. And it would be the 18,000 for this year. That right. would be the yep. 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 And we are, we're having a discussion later on this afternoon about grants and did that discussion. So perhaps we'll incorporate it with in that discussion. So back okay. to uh, Deputy Warden, was it that yeah. was next in line? Go yeah, ahead. No, I, I just had a quick question. Um, just the village of Bedeca, are they requesting gas tax funds for this or is this separate money? And we had any requests for 
because I know before it was mentioned that the gas tax fund went into the wharf. Yeah, so I don't know this, this what thing. where the village is generating this from. Okay. We uh, we have a village commissioner here. Do you happen to know, sir, if you're using? Uh, the question was whether it was going to be gas tax funds that the village would be using to uh, support this project. Okay, that's so, my understanding as well. Okay, thank you for that information. And you heard that, did you, Deputy? Yep, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, I, I wanna thank you for your presentation. We're gonna take it under consideration with our deliberations this afternoon and uh, good luck and with continued right. the continued work you're doing there to improve our county. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. To thank all you of the committee. We're going to move on. We're going to just reschedule our recess till uh, after district concerns. We're going to move into uh, the minutes of May 23rd, last council meeting. Those minutes have been circulated to you. You've had a chance to review those minutes. Are there any errors or omissions in that in those meeting notes? Hearing none, can we have a motion to accept the minutes of our council meeting of May 23rd? I make a motion. Thank you, Councilor McNeil. Do we have a seconder, please? Councilor McDonald, a second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minus. Motion is carried. The minutes are approved. Turn it over to the CAO for any uh, updates and uh, departmental updates as well. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'll just start out with a couple of things from action items. Um, as you know, we did in February, in March, or February, our strategic plan. Uh, so staff are still updating the strategic plan. We do have a first draft, but we're not, um, it needs some tweaks and some work to it. So um, we, we're waiting to, till we get that back from the uh, marketing group before we send that out to council, but it will be going out hopefully in the next uh, few weeks. Um, just a reminder, upland planning has been happening. The consultants will be going around seeking community input on the draft reporting and doing community meetings in uh, later in June and in July. Um, uh, I sent a copy of that document, that planning doc, the, the draft around to counselors. Uh, if you have any comments, please provide them back to me by uh, Thursday. Uh, still waiting for all counselors to give us their office hours. So please send that information to Jennifer so that she can, uh, we can start uh, arranging office hours and getting information out related to that. Um, we have received final survey plans. Well. Final survey plans um, uh, have been told to us from the Crown Land Conveyance. Um, they're being sent to land, land Registry Office for Migration, and we're processing payment for that, and that's for the transfer station down north. Uh, so we're one step closer on that. Our sea can for our North Shore washroom has arrived in Bedeck. Uh, staff will be doing repairs and upgrades on that, getting it ready to be moved to the North Shore. And we have a meeting scheduled with the North Shore group that will be looking after the operations of that for next week on the next steps. Um, an update on our Meals Plus uh, program that council has supported this year. So our first round is over at the end of June. The participants have been contacted um, related to that, our round two has been filled and there's a wait list in Washabuck, Inganish, Niels Harbor and Bay St. Lawrence. Um, and in Bay St. Lawrence, your wait list is actually quite large in that area. Um, we've also looked for recruitment. There will be recruitment next week for Bedeck, Big Bedeck and Middle River from Ross Ferry and North River. So there's one spot each for those. Um, I heard word today, so it wasn't on my report, but um, I think uh, the North counselors were uh, informed about it, but uh, Steve McDonald has told me that they are looking at placing a weather camera down north and are looking at suggestions for places for that to be placed. I know Smokey was, a, was one that was mentioned, but if you all have a better spot of where the more snow comes on the roads down there, uh, nobody knows better than you. So. Maybe if you can get me your comments back so I can pass them on to Steve related to that. What's that? 
it'll be more than one. I thought in the letter we sent out, whether it's the camp or us. The email? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think he's talking one. I think he's, one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I, if everyone has their mics on, also. Um, also, so center department updates. So finance has been working on year end prepping for audit. Sent in some reports to the province, the provincial reports that were due at the end of the month. Uh, working on our asset retirement project. Uh, working on a transit budget. Um, I think we're going to have to set a transit meeting for some time soon to happen. Um, the village assessment for 2023 is the final thing needed to be done for the village, um, and uh, Alan is working on that. Um, we have new career opportunities that have been that will be posted on our job postings page soon. <clears throat> so an update for our water smart meter upgrade. Uh, as of Friday, we had 93% of our customers signed up. Um, and so that's good news. So there's 7% still to go. Hopefully I didn't get today an update today, but hopefully we're closer to five or 4% related to that. Um, our tax update that was attached to the email that I sent out. So tax uh, collections are going well. Just a reminder or a note that our next tax sale is going to be July 18th, um, down in January. Um, and our public works department. So a few things from Kelly reporting over there. Straight Engineering is doing an assessment of our leachate wells on cell number one. They don't seem to be draining properly. So we are looking into that. Our North Shore septic for the washroom, the septic system tender has been awarded. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing work on that uh, step of it very soon. Um, once that happens, we're also going to try to schedule the well drillers at the same time uh, so that we can do well work on that. Uh, so we're, we are working on, on that, again, noting that the CCAN has arrived. Um, we are also looking at what we're going to do for our C&D hall from down north. Our trucks are going to be working on the South Haven uh, paving project. So we might need to wait a little bit for the CND to be hauled out of the Dingwall site. Um, an update on the Inganesh school roof that is moving along. Um, every time I've driven by, there seems to be more and more that's put up there. So uh, that's good. They're getting ready to almost shingle it very soon. It's shingled. Okay, my update is a little late then. That's good. It's great. Um, and the school septic that is down there was also pumped out on May 31st. Mm -hmm. Um, we have awarded the contract for the Inganish test pits for the water line extension um, and straight engineering is waiting on a, the contractor to book traffic control for that so that should be happening sometime soon. Uh, the stairs down in to the beach in Niels Harbor uh, Bruce was down looking at them, they are going to need an awful lot of new work. Um, we are looking to see possibly about moving them to a different location because they seem to wear out every year or a different material to build them with but we have not forgotten about them we're just um frustrated with waves coming in there uh so looking for some solutions uh we're also expecting our new side loader by late june or early july um and the public works group is also moving along with our asset management project over there um we're making some corrections to previous water maps that we had. We're capturing more data points. So we're, we're uh, uh, getting what we had and making it better. Um, in water, our water upgrade project is happening. Island well driver, drillers is going to be in Dingwall and they're going to be looking to identify a turbidity issue in one of our production wells down there. So you might see island well drillers around. Um, Bell has performed some work on our new SCADA panels in Bucklaw and in Dingwall. Um, with our new system in Niels Harbor, we have to haul sludge out, which I think is once or it's once or twice a year that sludge has to be hauled out at a major cost, about a thirty to thousand thirty to forty thousand dollar annual cost for that. Uh, so that's going to be happening soon. The first haul out of there. Um, our groundwork for our new tower in Dingwall is expected to be beginning soon. So um, once the groundwork is done, the next steps are uh, constructing the tower. 
Um, and DOT's culvert work that is requiring on our waterline in McKinnon's Harbor is to be, uh, for relocating that is scheduled to begin in June also. So uh, just to note that was not something that was uh, budgeted for related to that, but it is our cost. Um, and then uh, congratulations to Lance. He's now a class one treatment of water operator. Um, so Jennifer is working on the, our first copy of our newsletter that will be going out in the near future also. Um, we've seen a, a, a bit of a draft copy of that too. So um, uh, I'm excited to see what the first uh, issue is going to look like and, and get mailed out to our residents. In tourism and recreation. So in tourism, Dan uh, has been dealing with BABDA. So BABDA has hired a new marketing membership coordinator for the VIC and the beautification project over at the VIC is finishing up. He's been working on the STEP project, which um, was, there was meet, original meetings held um, in Inganish and uh, surrounding areas. Uh, that's gonna be kicking off, uh, that's actually kicked off and the meetings have been held. Um, there was 31 seasonal food establishments that opened in the month of, um, between May and June. So that's uh, very exciting for, uh, all around Victoria County. He's also working with a project uh, doing cluster mapping and he says it looks very interesting. And uh, he is also going to be having some meetings and doing some planning on the 100th anniversary of the Capitol Trail. We talked about that last week. No, I skipped over it because we talked about that last week. Um, recreation, our multi-sport program is going well, focus groups for bicycling Nova Scotia, and he's had meetings over in Ross Ferry on the dynamic trail workout, which I assume you're leading over there, Frazier, mm -hmm. in that area. Uh, I'm the leader. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trails, we've had early discussions with the DAC ATV Club, and uh, we've also approved our trails grants, but we're going to be talking about a couple of those that are added back to council. Uh, they were in on time. They just don't meet the qualifications that are in place for the trails funding pot that we have. So we're taking a couple of them back to um, community development. Uh, place making sessions are kicking off. Uh, they've met with the Department of Natural Resources and Renewables, spoke of keeping the provincial parks open longer, uh, especially for the washrooms around the county. And we've received a new stage uh, and we have stage training. We've sourced a trailer to haul the stage around in. Apparently it's very easy to set up, but we're only uh, allowing it to be set up by people with the training on it. So we're going to be doing some training around the county. And apparently it's quite a great, great um, asset to the county. So we're going to be looking at setting up a, um, a booking system for it also so that it, and it, cause it's portable and it can be moved around around the county for events that are happening. So um, pretty excited about that one. Um, in economic development, um, Parker will be coming to council or to our committee of the whole to be giving some updates. Uh, last week when he sent his report in, he wasn't able to be here because he was uh, taking part in the tourism economic impact study, which um, he was facilitating a week long event with KPMG analysts that were coming around and that uh, report um, is being worked on. Um, so he's, he was looking to have um, an immersive experience for these people so that when they go back to where their offices are, they can talk about the fabulous time that they had um, in tourism in Breton. Um, in terms of business advisory, he has been actively supporting numerous small to medium-sized businesses across Victoria County. Um, he's been looking into the topic of housing initiatives. There's various organizations exploring opportunities throughout Victoria County with nothing significant to report at this time, however. And lastly, he's pleased to share that the final stages of identifying the requirements for the feasibility study on electrification and the and an electrification grid. Uh, he's looking to set up um, with council a meeting with a group on uh, D, what's it called? Uh, it'd be electrification of some um, harbors. So kind of an interesting initiative and uh, some a group that does this. So uh, we will be seeing them coming to council 
very soon. So that's all that I have. Many questions, Dr. Patterson. Uh, thank you, Warden. Uh, the end in your action items, you uh, mentioned the uh, waterfront uh, request or whatever. Yep. And you also mentioned the uh, Kitchen Fest Daily College one. Yep. So, uh, uh, Warden, we're going to discuss the waterfront later on. So, I'd like to add that uh, we do yeah. both. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I left them out. Yep. Thank you. Just one quick question to yeah. the CAO with uh, regards to the Meals Plus program. You said that the highest percentage was it just specifically to Bay St. Lawrence or was it the district in general? Uh, she, so that's where the project is based out of, I think, for that center down there. And that's right. where she said that there was the wait, the longest wait. Thank you. Yeah. Deputy Warden has a question. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Leanne. Um, um, just a couple of questions. Upland, you mentioned they're going to be having some meetings. Is, are they planning one for Inganish? Because I know, I believe Norman and Jackie got an email about locations, but I never did. So I'm just wondering, are they planning to have one in Inganish? They yeah. are, okay. but they have a stakeholder that they're working with for the group there. They didn't have one in seven okay. and eight. Okay. So, no, as long as there's one in Inganish, that's a uh, yeah. main concern. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I still have to hear back from where, who you think would be a good group down in your area to work with them to host a community meeting. Okay. Uh, second question, as you mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, Christopher meeting with uh, Bicycle Nova Scotia, was it? Or? Yes. Yeah. Um, just wondering if maybe Chris can reach out to us because there's a lot of concerns on the Cabot Trail with the bicycling. And I think it's all one sided that uh, okay. there's, there's different views of what's going on. Yeah. So I just like it's to, like an active transportation okay, strategy that's being worked on through the province. So yeah, that's good to know. No, yeah. There, yeah, there's some yeah. issues I'd like to discuss with them. So no, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go with Councilor McNeil and Councilor McLeod. Just Mike, did, yep. did you uh, confirm about the John Neal George Road project also? Uh, like they said, they said that the low water line is going down the middle of the road there. Yep. But I've heard some residents tell me that it's along the sides and places too. So, so in our asset management project that we're working on, we're doing better at we're 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 planning on mapping out all of those things. Okay. So I don't have anything definite to tell you yet, but. We know that it's an issue down there. Also. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Councilor McLeod. Uh, yes, just uh, for the recreation department, do you, the survey is closed? Do they ask, uh, it's just about the activities. If you have any activities for the summer for around here. And, uh, and he, I think he did a survey. I don't know if it's closed the survey because he was asking what the people would like to do. Yeah. And I don't see any activities around our districts. Okay, so Dan was talking with Chris this morning and they are putting together an ad for a summer student or one to two summer students. Okay. So that should be coming out soon. And that's when the, uh, I, Dan hopefully will answer me on if the survey is closed. I think it is. And that is um, uh, forming what the job description is going to look like for the students. Okay. Uh, so, Okay. So, so yes, there, there are things being planned. I just can't give you details on it. That's fine. Yet. And the another one, uh, the, oh, the upland planning, um, my district didn't have it. So I just, they, they need to call me or I have to call them. So just, uh, I let them know that it was the middle river fire department yep. that is interested in hosting it there. So, okay. And just for uh, knowledge, uh, what is that um, station training? The, in the community development, they say we have a station training and set up. Uh, the stage, staging. The training. Training. Yeah, right. so this is for the, the portable stage that we've received oh, or okay. that, we, that we've purchased. So we're not gonna let any groups take the stage until somebody that's in that group has the training for oh. setting up the stage because we want to keep it as new as we can okay. uh, without broken pieces and we're developing a checklist for it. So staging training. Okay, thank you. Well, they should contact Dan on, um, on when it's, so it, it is here. The training. the training okay just a sec he's probably gonna message me on this right now that you're asking yeah just a quick question Your how big is, is oh sorry. Sorry, sorry how big is it dan the, okay, so here. The how, how big is the stage dan? um i might have him come in to talk about it no, i haven't just... seen it i think it's like 
20 by 20 okay, or yeah. no, 15 wondering. by 15. It's quite a, apparently it's a good size and it's sturdy and easy and there it is. <laughs> I didn't think it's stage would be this popular. Uh, 12 by 16. It's uh, yeah, it's all aluminum. It can raise from 24 inches to 48 inches. It can be on on, level, on a on level ground and it's got sides for two sides as well as a set of stairs. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's it's well purposed we also have a 10 by 10 canopy tent that can go on top of it for sunny days and depending on the events that we host okay. yeah the training side um we did our internal we did our, our team so the uh, public works guys colleen and myself and chris went through it to do the initial setup uh, map out and inventory all the pieces and the public works guys are building a storage con containment unit so we can easily count all the legs there's 32 legs and 48 feet and all these pieces so we want to make sure none of those get lost but there's no nuts or bolts or screws. It's all kind of snap in place and put together really, really fluid and probably about two hours for two people to set the whole thing up. So if an organization wants it, then they contact you? Yeah, we're gonna have a, a website and a login so they can book it on a calendar basis and, and they'll get confirmation through that, just like booking one of our rooms in the building here. Thank you. <laughs> not, to be, uh, not to be facetious, but counselors can take the training where I was involved with community groups and you should contact it, so. Yeah. I think we're we're, we're going to work with public works on the process of how it rolls out. Yep. Maybe that they people come to this site to pick it up, set up the stage themselves um, with public works, two or three panels, so they okay. get an understanding on it. But we're working out what's going to be required. Of it. Yep. Good to know. Thank you. And that training is potentially there for any of those that are so inclined. Others maybe not. So <laughs> here's your chance. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Councillor Longa. Uh, yes, I wondered if it's all like you have a location for the upland in my a district as well. Or if somebody's we are working with they're working with somebody. Yes, yeah, so I told them that there is to be five, at least five sessions, so I can't guarantee that they're in all. Um, but your area. Uh, what did we say would be. I can't remember it's been a few weeks. Um, I'll have to get back to you on. But I think there was a group down there. I think it was the development group, maybe, that they were talking to. You mean SABDA? Yeah, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'll yeah. have to ask. That would be uh, Jamie Murphy is the well, chair. I'll, I'll find out. Yeah. Um, how about I send you all an email on where the meetings are going? But I need to know from you two where a meeting should be in your area before they can set one up. Um, and then the proposed locations for the rest of them. But I don't think there, we're not, we're not gonna get eight meetings because um, they're a contractor, we have a certain set price, so we can't get meetings everywhere. Um, so I don't think there's one in the deck because it's already planned here. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy one out. Um, but we want to make meet the most people that we can and get the most. There was a large number at the first meeting they had in English Town. Yep. So um, I will send an email to everyone with where the proposed locations are for. Um, I also want to know what what does electrification of harbors? Is that what you said? Electrification of harbors? What that means? There's going to be a group come in and talk about it about um, possibly a port where. See if we can find a pilot port where the the boats are electric rather than. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, and I just wondered who was awarded the contract for the septic at the North Shore School site. Alex Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Alex Fitzgerald. Alex Fitzgerald. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. That was in the notes, and um, yeah, I believe it. Great, Councillor Patterson. Yeah, just quickly back to the uplands uh, meetings. They had one in Big Bador the first time. We had twelve to fifteen people, I believe. They didn't have one a second time. Uh, you know, I'm looking at this map and I, I think it needs explanation from the people who, who put it together. Uh, I think two people went from Big Bird to English Town last time. So, I mean, people aren't gonna travel if it's not in their district. So, and I understand the end of the contract is there. We do have to, they have to honor or they only have to perform to what they've agreed to. So maybe we can work something out. I don't know. If you send us the information, we can. So, so we've asked them to have a meeting with 
uh, to contact all the surveyors in the area to have a meeting with them uh, related to district or in district in Port Hawkesbury at district planning so that it's overall see what their thoughts are on this um, and then they're reaching out to key groups also so that they can have a partner in setting up these meetings so we it, it's not like it's only public meetings we're also seeing about having meetings with surveyors and um, some who may have some some more um, experience and knowledge on on what it is that they're trying to plan on to so Right. Thank you for mentioning that there won't be one in Bedeck because we already have planning and land use in effect here, so we don't uh, require that uh, that meeting here. I would encourage you, as I did, to go with, if you're close to one of the other adjoining uh, communities uh, to sit in on those sessions and as well. It's it's uh, I found it beneficial when I went down to English Town for the one I attended. So. All right, I just, because I know that under we under motions and proclamations, we have a, a number of items there. They're gonna take a bit of time. So I'd like to do uh, district concerns if we could it, it, with the, we don't need to do the uh, public works ones because they've been submitted. So I'd like to do the district concerns and start with uh, district number five, please. If we could, Councillor Patterson. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of things. You, you said the public work ones were addressed already. Uh, so you, uh, well, I just had the issue about signage again. Right. I mentioned it a couple of meetings ago, the signs that are down or broken or whatever. Uh, I was speaking to a first responder this weekend. Didn't know where to go because there was no sign there. You know, it seems to me they're just letting them fall where they may in the ditch. The tourists are coming you know people that are not familiar with the area so i would suggest we write a letter to the minister it's stating those reasons that first responders have to know tourists have to know even local people sometimes have to know signage is crucial to all of those things and i think they should set a certain amount of money aside and hire a crew to work on signs for the next six or eight months or whatever it takes to get them all all straight away. I assume it's the same in every district. Mm -hmm. The signs are down and you know they just kind of so I didn't even receive a reply to my email that I sent to the uh, local officials a month ago or more. So anyway, are you okay with I can fill in some more for you or okay? Yep, if thank you'll you. complete that. Thank you. So you made that in the I'll form the of the motion. Yes, yeah. uh, since that has to do with emergency response, et cetera, et cetera, we'll have to kind of take it as opposed to a public works. So, but that's a motion by uh, Councillor Patterson. Do we have a second or fourth, please? Second by Councillor Organ. All in favor? All right. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. And you fill out the appropriate paperwork, Fraser, and send it in to staff, yep. and it'll go forward. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things. Um, acting collectively, uh, the research project that's been carried out by Dalhousie University. And I think uh, Cassandra and Kagan are trained uh, interviewers, I believe. Uh, Kagan, Kagan is dispatch or to intake and uh, Cassandra is- Cassandra, so yeah. Anyway, they gave a presentation at our Lunch and Learn on Friday in Big Perdor, Dr. Warner and three of her assistants. And what they did was they challenged Richmond County, who has five councillors, to sign up five people in five weeks. So they want us, eight of us, to sign up eight people, but we get eight weeks to do it. So if you're um, taking this on, you can contact Cassandra and she'll give you some idea of what's involved or whatever. And uh, they're trying to get the number of interviews so it will be valid research you know it, it'll actually express what's going on the basic intent is to match up uh people's needs with the resources that are available to them okay okay just two other quick things and they're kind of connected um when you when you use the counselor contact form on our website I got one, it was in my junk mail, and I tested it myself, 
and it went to my junk mail. I don't check my junk mail that often because I figured it's junk. But if someone uses that counselor contact form on our website, it, for me anyway, it went to junk. I don't know if everybody has that situation or not. Try it, try it, just if you, you don't have to do it So today. that's an easy fix. We can get our IT guy to unblock that for you. So yeah, that's what it probably, yeah, and I don't know if anybody else has the problem or not, and I can't say for sure. We'll, we'll unblock that. Okay. We'll get uh, David and the team to yeah, unblock Okay, that. and the final thing, I, I sent an email on Tuesday. I uh, got a call from a fairly upset resident who went to the transfer station uh, with a load of wood products, nothing uh, womanized or preserved or whatever. Uh, there were a few branches, and I took some pictures and left my phone home. But anyway, um, he was refused. They wouldn't take it. So I'll get to my question on this in a minute. But he did have four pallets holding the load down. They put pallets on it and then strapped over with so on. The person at the way station said, well, we can't take that load of wood, but we will take the pallets. Mm -hmm. So that was like, you know, waving the red flag in front of a, a bull because, you know, they wanted the pallets because they were useful. They could probably use them or whatever. So anyway, my question is, is there any record kept of when a person um, is refused uh, service at the uh, transfer station? Uh, yes, so uh, you passed a bylaw, a solid waste bylaw on mm -hmm. May, 20, May 31st, 2021, that only allowed a certain diameter of wood. Mm -hmm. um, I, I spoke to our team, the wood was larger than the allowable inch diameter. So that's why it was refused. Um, the person was very, um, the person was upset, but mm -hmm. was was um, speaking in a tone and a language that is not acceptable uh, to our staff. Um, so the wood is not accepted. It's a bylaw that's passed. Mm -hmm. We're not accepting wood of that size. So I I don't know what you want us to. We're following the rules. Yeah, no, I'm bylaws. just bringing it forward, and that's that's I feel that's my job. The person had a concern. Uh, I, I wasn't there, right? you know, but you, we you, weren't there right. and we yep. have two we sides have a bylaw of the story place as usual. And we're following the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so the I pallets guess, are I guess... acceptable and we don't use things that come in. We don't take things out. We're not scavenging off of anyone. So if the pallets came in, that's because they're, they're a product that is allowed, that is acceptable. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that, was using... a, that was an assumption too. I agree, but yes, I'm, we're just, not using I'm just stating, I'm just stating what was, was relayed to me. Um, right. So is there, okay. In that report that you said is, is written up is the reason given why it's not acceptable. You passed a bylaw, a yeah. solid waste bylaw. Mm -hmm. Definition U has um, wood of one inch. Mm -hmm. So that is why it wasn't accepted. Anything is, larger than it, one inch is not accepted. Is that in the report? It's written up. It, or is, I guess my question is, the person at the transfer station can say no. Yep. And there's no recourse. Like, you know, why did they say no or whatever? If there is a report, if it's refused, maybe we should look at... The warden comes in with a load of stuff. We refuse it. We say, look, sir, sorry, warden. We cannot take this material because it, whatever. Here's our slip saying that. You're referring to something like a little incident report that well, if it's on refused, this date warden, if it's from this person, refused, it was yeah. refused for yeah. the following reason. The reason why, I guess, the person should have a clear understanding of the reason why it's refused. I just So I'll refer you to the bylaw, which is on our website. Yeah, I know, but the person, the, the person bringing the stuff to the transfer station is not going to look at the bylaw. When they're state, standing at the station with someone saying, you can't bring that in here. I think they're not going to whip out the bylaw. Okay. The transfer station attendants say that because do that it's larger than an inch, it can't come into it. Yep. Was that explained to the resident? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. but I, I wonder if it should be written down. That's the only thing I think. 
I, I would say, unless we're getting a lot of complaints, you, we, we're yeah, okay, okay the way yeah, it is. That's, but that's for, if, if we find that's they escalate, yeah. yeah. But I understand what you're saying. It's yeah. like just a record kept what was rejected when and from who. So, I'm assuming that they do have, I've not had this, I've not had to look for any of those, but I'm assuming that they do. And then any issues that they have, they forward on to their supervisors also. So yes, yeah. there should be a record there somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, I think that's it, Morton. I think Thank you. Anything else? And we, uh, we didn't last time, uh, Councillor no. Patterson, but we want to, on behalf of Council, congratulate you on your election to the FCM board. Thank so, you. Well done. Thank you. I had an excellent team. Uh, Norm, Norm, Councillor McDonald was the enforcer, <laughs> Barb was the charmer, and, and Larry was the scrutineer. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Warden. And uh, Count, I'm sorry, you're done. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McDonald, what do you, any district concerns in your district, sir? Yes, sir, thank you, Warden. Just a few I'd like to bring forward this afternoon. Um, first is in regard to uh, Victoria County Transit in the north. I had a call, a couple of calls actually last week from a local area residents who were upset that the bus hadn't been, the service wasn't being provided. And at that time, I honestly did not know the bus wasn't working. So then I took it upon myself, I called the operator or dispatch and sent an email to him, which I also forwarded to council as well. And he had explained that it had been in a service for six weeks and they were waiting for parts and back orders and that the buses themselves are uh, at the end of their life cycle, so to speak, but that the south bus was being serviced in the north for medical appointments only. But most of the, the constituents that I talked to said that when they called the dispatch line, they just received a message saying that the north bus was at a service and that some of the people that tried to make medical appointments were not able to uh, make them and they in turn missed their medical appointments. So I think my thing with everything is the lack of communication between, and I discussed it with the chair of the transit, and that uh, there's just no communication there. And I'd ask if there's maybe, and I don't mean with the chair, sorry, I mean with dispatch itself. Yes. So that the residents weren't aware of that. And also that if I asked if, like in today's world, everybody does look to social media, probably more so than the county website. If it's not on social media, in a sense, it might not have happened. And I checked, uh, the transit website that they use through their Facebook Avenue and the last post was in January. So the communication is just not there. And I just think that's something we have to, in order to provide that service, it seems like that North bus is constantly out of service. And I know that they're trying to alleviate with uh, taking the South bus down. And the other part of it too is, is and Councillor Patterson had brought that up through one of our uh, email discussions was with uh, the funding that was supposed to come through the federal government for new buses. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to uh, Alan just a while ago in regard to that. And he had spoke to uh, Mr. Tobin. They're saying that the, the funding is there, but that's been since quite a while to mm -hmm. my understanding. So I was wondering maybe if we could just write a, a letter, I'd like to make a motion to send to uh, federal MP Batiste and ask him where this stands situation because as we all know, both those buses are constantly breaking down, needing parts and what have you. So if I could make that a motion to have a letter sent to MPBT. Sure can. Uh, we have to Tory County to further find out the, where the funding lies. Status of the funding. Second. That's seconded by Council Patterson. All in favor? Yeah. Country minded. Motion is carried. Thank you. Just a couple other quick ones. Yep. I, I'd forward this all to public works. I was looking for in regards to the greater coming north, but Sadly, I think it's been there and gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's honestly very disappointing because there's roads home that are not being done. Right. And there's a few in each district, you know, that are, we're getting, getting callbacks and everything. And uh, one is a federal, again, the road that goes to the wharf in Dingwall, a fisherman column and constantly it's one of, you know, they're looking for gravel, they're looking for the road to be done. And when I do forward it off to public works, they say that it's not their responsibility because it's not on the provincial side. It's the federal side. Well, I don't know if any of the federal government has specific graders that do federal roads, but I just, you know, we have to have better, uh, a better understanding of that. And how, I guess my question is, and I might get in trouble for saying this, how can we grade the roads in Victoria County, especially North in like two days, two or three days? It's not possible. 
you know, for the one grader to come from, is it Inverness County? You know, it's shared between, it's shared. I believe it's shared between the two counties. So that, that's just something I, I want to bring up if I could, just so that the minister sure. would reflect. Yep. And uh, the other concerns I did send to uh, Mr. McDonald in regard to uh, District 8. And lastly, I would just like to uh, make a motion, or not necessarily a motion, I'd like to take $1,500 from my District 8 budget. I'd like to have 500 for the Bay St. Lawrence Fire Department Crab Festival, which will be coming up in July. 500 for the Bay St. Lawrence Community Center to offset the cost of the community covered and food programs. And $500 to the Northern Cabot Land and Society for our upcoming Cabot Day event on July 2nd. Okay, thank you. So no, we're good. Those are that. In under a thousand, so we'll reference them in the minutes and no yes, motion sir. required. That's it for District 8. Thank you, sir. Councillor Oregon. Thank you. Uh, strict concerns. Uh, I had a couple calls to about the bus that Mr. McDonald uh, talked about. Uh, people asking when it's coming back, and it, it seems to be missing from north all the time. But, anyways, that was brought up, so I won't be. Uh, talking about it anymore. Uh, I've had a few calls about um, the water meter installs. Some of the appointments have been late, some of them have been canceled, rescheduled, but hopefully everything's on track. And if you haven't made your appointment, not through lack of us not trying to get hold of people, but anyways, uh, please do. Your efforts on that. Um, also, uh, I've sent out and I've noticed that a few other uh, wardens have, um, or not, wardens counselors have shared is a, a job fair at, will, will be at Cabot Education Center on Saturday, June 17th from 12 to five. Uh, they're seeking candidates for the following positions, cleaners, custodians, teachers, assistants, bus drivers, lunch bus ground supervisor. So if you're uh, looking for a job, please come to the, the fair. Um, let's see. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to take $1,000 out of my district budget for the North Inganish Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, I agree. Council Oregon would like to make a motion to take $1,000 out of my district budget for the Niels Harbor New Haven Volunteer Fire Department. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have three more, so <laughs> uh, I, Council Oregon, like to take $1,000 out of my district budget for the Inganish United Church for their cemetery fund. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm spending today. I, Council Oregon, like to take $1,000 out of my district budget for St. John's Anglican Church in Inganish for the cemetery fund. <laughs> One more. Um, I, Council Oregon, would like to make a motion to take $1,000 out of my district budget for St. Andrew's Anglican Church in Neal Server for their cemetery fund. <laughs> no, oh, well, didn't run out of motions, but I did run out of money. Um, I have... Uh, a concern about the sign at uh, the Cabot Education Center. It's been on the ground, covered up with gravel. It looks awful. It's been, it's an, it's an eyesore. So I, Council Oregon, uh, move that we, that Council send a letter to both the Cabot Education Center and the Cape Breton Victoria Center for Education about the sign for Cabot that has been down on the ground for a while now and needs to be repaired and replaced. Also, the fence is in need of repair. It looks very unprofessional. Thank you. We have a seconder for that, please. Second, second by Councilor McDonald. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Uh, I did have a few public works concerned. I CC to I, I sent them off to Mr. McDonald and I CC'd Steph on them, and I am still looking for my no parking sign for Lake Point. 
And that's all my district. Concerns. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're a busy lady. Councilor McNeil, any district concerns for district number one, please? Yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Charlene Ellis and the students of Rankin School of Ramirez. They did a cleanup from the school right to the port of Iona, and it was a job well done. But uh, again, probably two days after it was done, there was garbage back in the ditch. So I wonder if there's uh, signs, again, county signs or some signs, no littering. Uh, that we could place in strategic areas around the county. Yeah. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate Charlene Ellis on her retirement as a teacher at Rankin, well, Rankin Memorial first and then Rankin School of the Nares. Uh, she was, has been a dedicated to her students for over 35 years. Uh, also coaching soccer and track and field and uh, head at the Remembrance Day ceremony there. And uh, I hope she enjoys her retirement. So, uh, also congratulate the board and uh, the members of Central Cape Breton Community Ventures and Aris and Mara on a very successful World Ocean Day Festival the last, uh, last weekend, right from Thursday to Sunday. There was quite a few people around the port of uh, Iona on Sunday. And uh, the wind and the cold air didn't <laughs> didn't dampen the spirits. Also, I'd like to just I, I sent my concerns to Steph, but I'd like to add one to uh, CGC Little Narrows had open houses uh, uh, in the area, uh, one in Bedeck, uh, Port Hawkesbury, Iona, and Waikagama. They were very successful. Uh, they were explaining the jobs and compensation packages. It looks very competitive wages throughout and the compensation packages start from day one. They don't have a three month waiting period or anything like that. So uh, if anybody is interested, go to CGC Little Naris website and uh, they have explanation of the jobs and the packages there too. Very good. Thank you, Councilor. Oh. And uh, Deputy Ward. And uh, before we leave that, I don't know if we ever did the same correspondence. We should. Gibson for yeah, we, that and yeah, we should send a letter. I'll, I'll uh, make that a motion that we send a letter to CGC, uh, Little Harris, and thanking them for, for having confidence to come back in, Absolutely. Uh, in Victoria County and, and kind, of, kind of guaranteeing at least 100 well paying jobs. In the area. Absolutely. Great news. Thank you for reporting on that. Do you wish to make that a motion, sir? Do we have a seconder for that, please? Seconded by Council Oregon. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. We're going to move on to Deputy Warden. Uh, thanks, Warden. A couple of motions. Um, first one is uh, I, Councilor Larry Doffney, move that um, Highland Manor Municipal Housing Corp be exempt from the deed transfer tax as it purchases lands for the new Highland Manor. As a registered charity and be and so being so exempt under section 109 paragraph 7 of the mga so i'd like to make that a motion that uh, we accept uh, the highland manor corp from the deed transfer tax second in favor uh, contrary minded motions carried thank you uh secondly <coughs> Uh, Councillor Daphne uh, moved that the County of Victoria provide uh, and arrange uh, transfer of bridge financing to the for the purchase of two properties for the construction of the new Highland Manor. Uh, these funds can be transmitted to the county lawyer, uh, Mark Dunning, um, and those funds can be transferred to the lawyer who in turn uh, will reimburse the county once the funding is received from the province. So based on that, basically what's happened is we put a request in for the draw for the mortgage so that went in on last thursday but it's been taking an average of 45 days uh for us to receive the money which would delay us another month and a half but i'm expecting with the summer the delay is probably even going to get longer and longer so we're really at jeopardy right now of losing this construction period and not have groundbreaking so we hope to do the land work uh, work this year but uh, i make that a motion thank you uh one is seventy-seven thousand, and the other is thirty-five thousand. but i believe it's probably thirty thousand because we already made a five thousand dollar deposit to one of the properties but Mark can uh, confirm uh, those amounts. We have a seconder for that, please. Question: Is that thousand dollars? Seventy-seven thousand plus thirty thousand, so one hundred seven thousand dollars. But the province will be paying the money back. The problem is, is that we cannot finalize the purchase of land until the money is there 
and it may take the province a month and a half to two months to, to give us the money so we cover that our construction period so it's just the same question it's money there right we would just so move some. as long as we're only bridge financing exactly. and we're not giving them it for bridge financing yep i think we can I think we can do that. And, and I don't even think the manor has to be involved in it because the lawyer, the funds from the province go to Mark, our lawyer, okay. and then he disperses them to the Highland Manor to pay the bills. So in this case, he would receive the money from the province. He would uh, re reimburse the money to the county. Yeah. It'd be done straightforward. It's just a time frame. Yeah, I, it, I think it would be wise perhaps for the uh, lawyer just to yes. send the letter of explanation and understanding to the exactly. CAO and once she receives that and approves it we'll release the money exactly. we, we need a seconder for that I'll second I Second, like to, uh, sorry Councilor Doffy said that uh, Alderwood and Highland Manor is property of Victoria County correct yes so it's not like it's their own entity it's ours it's ours you know what I mean by that I just it, want yeah, this. It is. Yeah. we own it yeah yeah I'll second that motion. It's a second. So any further discussion on the motion? So once we get the letter, and that's for your protection and the protection yep. of, oh, for yep. all involved. So, yep, yep. Thank, thank you. you. Not a problem. If we can move it forward, we will. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. Uh, just a couple of quick things. A um, couple of months ago, I requested a status of the grants in lieu. I'm just wondering, Leanne, if we had a chance to look at it, or if not, we could just get a look at who actually is getting a grant in lieu. Like I know the federal government is probably the provincial departments and whatnot. I, I just like to have a review of it to see if we feel that we're being fairly compensated by those grants in lieu. Um, uh, I can get you the list. It doesn't matter if we feel that or not. Well, you can't appeal them. It? You can't appeal them. Uh, yeah. Citadel Hill in Halifax actually appealed one a couple of years ago yeah. and was very successful. Yep. And very I think we looked into that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we should be able to get that list. Yeah, just just for interest, it would be nice to know. Yeah. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The only other thing is, um, at one time we were looking, we had that piece of land in English Center, remember we were looking at, and we had it surveyed, and there was a lot of confusion over it. Uh, I'm just wondering, what was the final word on that? Because like, someone was asking me the other day about it, if we still had land. Yeah, Upper Oprah's Road. Remember, it was a real nightmare of uh, survey and whatnot. But I'm just wondering if, if we ever got any detail. Yeah. I'm just Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we should start it again or try to finalize it because, again, I'm hoping we're going to get requests for land for uh, housing. Uh, I, I just, uh, some, like I say, someone came in the other day and was asked about it, and I didn't have an answer exactly where it was left, but uh, I knew it was quite expensive to uh, get services into it, but we wouldn't have to look after that. I just yeah, want to I make sure. Yeah, it might so. even be really expensive to survey it. Yeah, um, I think it is. And, and, that, and that's fair. That's the answer that comes back, but I'm just, and maybe we wait until someone actually says they're interested in it, and then we go ahead with the survey. But I'd just like to have a detailed answer on where we stand with it and if yeah, it's still a possibility okay. if, uh, if we have a housing for or okay. someone that's looking I'll, to I'll look that up again. I just can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. I, I know we've gone through it and stuff, but yeah. uh, if you could do that, I'd be greatly appreciated. And that is good for me. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Councillor Long there. Uh, I had a motion. Um, I, Councillor Longva, move that we write a letter to Mary Black, the government relations for Nova Scotia Power, requesting Nova Scotia Power to have a public meeting at the Indian Brook Fire Hall to update the residents and District 4 on the ongoing project they're doing at the Rec Cove Hydro project. Seconder for that request, please, that motion. That's seconded by the Deputy Warden. All in favor? Country minded. Motion's carried. Thank you, Burke. Um, I also had uh, issues, well, um, an issue with the transportation, communication and transportation, because there I had uh, uh, someone in my district that had made an appointment and missed their appointment, were never called to be told that their appointment was canceled or that they couldn't make it. Transit? Yes, yeah, transit. Um, and last but not least, there's uh, the, the there was folks on the New Harris Road uh, did contact Steve McDonald and they cc'd me on the letter and I believe Keith Bain uh, with complaints about how bad the road is and and issues about uh, from Fiona like things that weren't cleaned up and. Anyway, there's new. They, they sent that letter out last week, but now there's more issues apparently on that road. And I just asked if Steve McDowell could take a drive down that road and uh, and check it out. And I will send that off to him. But just wanted to have it in the minutes. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, duly noted. And uh, we're going to go to Councillor McLeod. Thank you, Warren. Um, I have 
uh, just you say the um, meal plus from my district. Uh, they're still waiting. There's one space left for Bibedek I mean, River. So if somebody's interested in over 50 years old to call Jennifer Replay, 902-294-0760. Uh, There's still one, uh, one uh, space left. Uh, it's a great program. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can feel it. Uh, for public works, um, I just for um, to put in the meetings, uh, we talk about the construction in Bedeck Bridge. Uh, there's some concern in the traffic for the campground, so they're looking uh, how to deal with the lineup, and uh, is the engineers are checking that. And um, and South Big Bedeck is just looking uh, for some patching. The payment is breaking up again, so it's just for uh, for being the minutes. And I just have a, we have the fires like this last month and we have a scare too about it's so dry, right? So I just wonder if we can write a letter to the premier, the premier and um, just to ask him a consideration about budget, consideration of funding for the fire departments because mm -hmm. in Halifax they pay them, right? But mm -hmm. here in rural it's, it's volunteer. So we can imagine what happened if something fires here in Cape Breton. So mm -hmm. uh, Councilor McLeod moved the write a letter for the Premier Tim Houston to ask the consideration to support more fire departments in the province after fires last month. It's scary to know our fire departments are not full equipment and expecting to fight forest fires. So if any help for us and more funding is, we forget them all the time, but when it's an emergency, everybody expected they do the job, right? And I think that's it. I just want to say thank you to the staff, uh, council, and the community for its support. <laughs> Sorry, they gave me all these months. So thank you so much. Very <laughs> good. Yeah, just much. But thank you. And I'll be back. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And it's great to have you here with us today. Absolutely. I'll, I'll second her motion. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. The letter will go to the Premier and Deputy Ward. Yeah, I just had one uh, issue I forgot to mention. Uh, I received a, an email, I guess it was on last Thursday or Friday, from uh, area manager Steve McDonald in regards to courtesy roads. I don't know if anyone else has courtesy roads in their area, but basically, what a courtesy road is, it's not a listed road, uh, but it's a road, that, a road that the province has looked after for the last 50 some years in this case, but two of them in Inganish, uh, Barb's Lane and Long Tom Road, uh, which has a large number of residents on it. Uh, they've always had grading and plowing services since the last, like I say, 50 plus years. Uh, I received notice from Steve that they would not be grading them this year that because of the poor condition, they weren't gonna grade them. And they're also considering not plowing them. Um, so anyway, uh, he asked what our, my response was, how I'd like to proceed. And I said, well, first of all, it's a provincial issue. So we forwarded on to Keith Bain uh, for his comments. And once I hear back from Keith and I know where it's going, we may be coming back to council for, for a motion on it to just write some letters. Um, but at this time, I just want to make it public that uh, that uh, email has been received. And uh, if you have a courtesy road, uh, better it's time to talk to your MLA yeah. and see where it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Sorry, Councilor McLeod. Forget, um, I have another the complaints for Victoria Transit as well. Uh, no answer, uh, voicemail is full. Uh, the person didn't know if he was coming or not. So eventually the, the bus didn't come and they have to call for a ride somewhere else. So the communication and the an, service. I think is, we need to have a transit meeting. Yeah, and I would suggest you have a transit meeting very as ACAP to, to deal with that, yeah. Thank you. Um, Ward, you will. Just uh, Deputy Warden, I have two in my district too. And they didn't. They they courtesy uh, roads. Yeah, they courtesy roads. Did they skip them this time for grading, or did they do? They don't do anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I just double checking for my own concerns that I sent out this morning, so I just want to make sure I was just looking them up there. Uh, I don't have any motions today. I just want to. Uh, to thank uh, council and the community and the families of Jessica Wong for the renaming of the street last uh, two, last week, two weeks ago, last week. And uh, yeah, it seems so. So I'm not sure if we had an opportunity to do that to a committee of the whole. So I just, it was a wonderful event and it 
it's that story has been carried because of uh, really from Nova Scotia to Vancouver. So, and on behalf of council, we want to really I'd like to express uh, thanks to Jessica herself for for uh, opening up and allowing us to do it. So, it is well deserving, and uh, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity doing it for her. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to uh, mention was um, just a note to Steve McDonald, although I said we wouldn't do public works things, we kind of all slipped back into that because it's a common theme. Just uh, would like to a, re a letter sent to him, I guess we have to in the form of a motion, just what the uh, schedule is for patching of streets in the village. He was, uh, they were he and deputy minister were here a month and a half ago and said that they were going to do some work we haven't seen it yet and complaints are continuing some of the streets are literally crumbling um under the traffic right now so for a tourist community that's not a good that's not a it is a motion please so we have a motion on the table do you have a seconder for that motion second by councillor mcneil all in favor country minded motion passed so that's uh, that's district concerns done. We're going to take a ten minute break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to deal with motions and pro and proclamations. So, and then we're going to turn the the heat the heat down in this room. So, I don't know how warm it is out there, but it's it's warm in here.
So we're going to reconvene council and we're going to deal with the next item on the agenda with the uh, motion and proclamations are going to stay in there where they are in the agenda. We're just going to realign um, the order that we're going to deal with them in the interest of time. So everybody is in agreement. So we'll start first with the marketing lev levy bylaw. We had a motion. Uh, we had a public hearing uh, at one o'clock this afternoon. We allowed folks that were in favor in support of, of that marketing levy bylaw. So is there a motion from council to move forward with a decision on um, accepting the marketing levy bylaw? I move that we accept the marketing uh, first reading of the marketing bylaw, levy bylaw. Oh, a second and final? Second, second oh, and final. Yes, sorry, I was reading the wrong one. Yep, yeah, I make that motion. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that, please? Second. Councillor McLeod is seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. So the motion is carried and the second reading for the marketing uh, levy bylaw is approved. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna move into the number, the second one, we would just like to assign special constable, constables from the Eastern District Planning Commission so that they can issue summary offense tickets and we don't have to uh, wait for people from Port Hawkesbury. No, and, that's not true. This sorry. Community. Sorry, I stand corrected on that. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for coming today. So we need a motion to appoint Eastern District Planning staff as special, special constables for land use by law enforcement for 2023 to 2024, effective today, June 12th, 2023. And they would be Sean Donovan, manager of inspection services and Jonathan Martin, senior building officials. So that is the correct motion and I stand corrected. Do we have a motion to that effect, please? That is for zoning and land use. So that is in effect for the village of Bedeck currently. And then once we approve uh, zoning in other areas, that will they will be there for that. It's been moved by Councilor McNeil. Do we have a seconder, please? Second. Second by Councilman McLeod. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, mind it. Next two items may not be as quick. Uh, we're going to move to grants and water. Uh, we discussed water accounts discussion. Uh, we need a motion from uh, to improve the recommendation from in-camera session that was held at 1.30 this afternoon to approve that recommendation that dealt with water accounts. Thank you, Councillor. It's been moved by Councillor Longba. Do we have a seconder, please? Seconded by Councillor McNeil. All in favor? Contrary, uh, contrary minded. Motion is carried. So we're going to move on to uh, we have some grants that require further attention. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the CAO. I believe there are three that are uh, we're going to discuss. And uh, so, Leanne, please, if you want to introduce uh, those grants for discussion, please. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm bringing this forward because we were asked to bring it forward. Um, the first one is for Kitchen Fest. I received a request for funding on May 25th. Uh, Kitchen Fest is seeking $10,000 for sponsorship. Um, so that is the first one. So we received correspondence on that, and we, we, we wish to include that request after the uh, deadline is closed. Councilor Patterson. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, Warren. Uh, it was late. There's no question of that. But I think we've looked at others, even though they were property relief. Uh, and then we're going no, to we have not looked at other grant applications. All other grant applications. There wasn't even a grant application for this. It was an email of an ask. No, I, understand that. I understand that. Yeah. No, we have not looked at other. Yeah. Um, but we have grants. another issue we're going to talk about later on, too. Um, it, it not only a benefit to the whole county, it brings people in, uh, it brings tourists in. Um, so I would therefore move that we. Uh, a lot uh just impressed uh ten thousand dollars do we have a second for that sorry councillor longo what's it thank you any discussion on we're going to open to discussion on the motion so any discussion on the motion councillor mcneil 
Just is your mic on? Yeah. Right now, we have a surplus of $923 or whatever. 951. Uh, okay. So, so we're going to have to shift money around or take it from our reserve. Is that right? Special project. So, so we, we do have the money to, to do this with, this with these grants that are coming up, right? We can, we can, we're going to have to find it somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, if I'm... we're going to have to find it, if council approves this, but once the floodgate is open, keep in mind, you're letting late come in. So why have a deadline? Understood. What's the decision? Yes, Councillor Longa. Yeah. Like, uh, can they apply through tourism? Um, for that as well, or like for part of it. Um, I think I think Kitchen Fest is like, you know, it is a really good thing, but people have to start getting their, you know, looking at our deadlines and following them. Uh, because, you know, but I, but I agree, I had people in today, they were at, like talking about the Kitchen Fest and how great it is. And, you know, it's true what, uh, uh, Councillor Patterson said, like, it's good for all Victoria County it does bring people here and, uh, but we do have deadlines and when are we going to make the rule that, you know, a deadline's a deadline and if you're if, after it, you know, you can't get in. Yeah. Because they're, why do we set deadlines like uh, the CAO said? It's, Absolutely, yeah, I appreciate your comments. But it's from my; it is in my district. Yeah, and uh, and I think it's a really good thing. Like the Writers Festival also is a good thing, but they were on time. Um, anyway, is anyway. there money? Like, can they apply for money for like from tourism? So tourism has a, has a small pot, um, and the max that can go from a tourism. Uh, some type of development or tourism grant would be five hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Just the, and to your point, uh, Bar Councillor, is you get to vote on it one way or the other if you support. Oh, it I seconded not, so. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that gets it to the table. So. <laughs> yeah, and the in the intent of second get it to the table for discussion so a vote can be held. Councillor Patterson. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Deputy Warden. Uh, just a quick one. I, I guess I was a little concerned when I read the emails from, from the Gailey College in that uh, they made a mistake and sent Invernesses to us instead of Victoria. But I did, re I did realize after reading through them that they were requesting 5,000 from Inverness, but 10,000 from Victoria. And I'm just wondering why are we seem like we're always the ones that are financing all these things happening. And uh, I'm just kind of concerned that one county gets off at 5,000, they expect 10,000 here. So. Anyway, I just want to make that point. Yeah, it's a good point, and maybe it's because we're the host at the Gala College. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it's a good just point. Close, sorry. sorry, go ahead, sir. Just to close, on, and on that point, uh, Deputy Warden, uh, this is also a sponsorship. It's not like your regular uh, request, right? So I think we, at that level, are a silver sponsor, where Inverness is only a bronze. So, I mean, there's, there's that value to it, too, that... Uh, does it pertain to the Big Bedore Hall when we give them money? All right, uh, Councilor McLeod. Just, uh, I, yeah, I know they want 10,000, but what about you just give it 5,000 for the, it's not because it's asking 10, we will have to give it a 10. Uh, I know it's good for the county, but as everybody's agree, the deadlines are deadlines. So at least they have to notice it, not just because email and give me the money will be, I know it's a good festival and, and everything. So if somebody else want from district budget, you know, it's, it's, or if we're going to give it from the county, I say 5,000. Okay. Um, so just to make the point that it's not like a- Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay, any other discussion? So he, we're kind of here, the motion was uh, that we support this uh, and the original request was for 10,000. So. Uh, that's what the motion was. So that's what we have to vote on. And I think procedurally, then if it if it's approved, we move on. If it's not, then the a motion to 
the 5,000 would be, that would be my understanding from a procedural point of view. So we, the, the motion right now, if everybody's had a chance to comment on it. So the motion is, do we want to provide a sponsorship to Kitchen Fest for $10,000, all in favor? Contrary minded. So the motion is defeated. And it, did you want to make a second motion? Oh, I would make a motion for give it five thousand dollars for this bunch of food. Okay, it's been moved by Councilor McLeod. Do we have a seconder for that? Seconded by Deputy Warden. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. So the second one is um, the motion is that said we sponsor Kitchen Fest to five thousand dollars. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion's carried. We will release five thousand dollars for that. Okay, thank you. So the next one is uh, the presentation that was earlier on the Bedeck waterfront. So uh, I had a meeting with Steve and Terry on May 18th. Um, I had a discussion with them that they were late. Why didn't they have an application in? Um, and he noted that the funding, they didn't know they had to have the money up front. They thought they could wait a few years. But anyway, um, they were still past the deadline. So as you heard, they are looking for a total of 56,000. It was 80 when I had been talking to them. So now it's down to 56 that they are looking for a grant 18,000 each year for the next three years. Which generates 301,000. So any discussion, any motions on this one? Yes, sir. Uh, do you want to do the same procedural uh, vote on it and then put a motion in place? And then discuss. Well, we got it. We have to do a motion to discuss. So we need a motion. We need a motion to to say that the motion needs to say that we are prepared to support this proposal to the tune of eighteen thousand over three years. So we need that motion to get it to the table to have the discussion to vote on. So do we have a motion to that effect? I make the motion. Moved by the deputy warden, seconded by Councilor McLeod. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Yes, sir. Um, I, I hate to see losing $300,000 for $18,000 over three years. I don't really have an issue with it other than I'd like to see the documentation stating that the $300,000 is in jeopardy if they don't have mm. $80,000 in the bank. Mm. Um, but I don't really have an issue with it other than I'd like to see the documentation stating that the $300,000 is in jeopardy if they don't have $80,000 in the bank. Mm. Our money is how recent to the 300,000 is received. I, guess. I, I don't know how we word that, but that's my concern is that I don't, I don't want to see 300,000 dollars lost. Yeah. I want to make sure that No, that's that's a reasonable request in my opinion. Any other discussion on yeah, it? Just, uh, just what the dip, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, just what the deputy warden said, and I, I assume it's the other way around. If we approve the 18,000, then they get access to the three hundred thousand. Not, uh, you know, as the three hundred thousand. You know, I, I think it's complicated that way. Uh, <clears throat> again, it, it's just one of those situations, and I think uh, the deputy warden is correct, and and whoever is going to talk to them, you know, make sure that that is the the case for sure. Not that we don't trust anybody, but we'd like to see it. It's our money. And secondly, he did make reference to a possible. A refund of some or all of it, and I think that should really be be stressed that yeah. they we're getting them out of the bind now, but they have a couple of years to to raise that eighteen thousand or whatever, you know. So I'd like just like to add those oh, in the negotiations. I guess is what I'm saying, yeah. or or the the exchange between uh, our office and their organization that those points be uh, brought out. Yep. No, I, we, we can make sure that the CAO goes over whatever arrangement is being made. And I guess from my perspective, this, they have a proven track record of what they're doing down there. They've been very successful. And, and finally, after 50 years, somebody is taking ownership and doing something as far as development down along the waterfront, which has been on the, uh, on the discussion for years and years. Councillor Oregon, do you have a comment, please? Yeah, um, I just... Uh... I mean, I don't want to see them lose the money either, but I just wish the village of Bedeck was a little closer to what we're 
we're paying. Um, we're for all Victoria County, and I, and I know oh, it's not going to sound. This this is really really benefiting Bedak tourism, and I I think village of Bedak should step up a little bit more. Yeah, I. And I, and I know, I mean, it's tourism. I, I'm, I'm, but that's one of the places I, I like to not go to in the summertime because it's too, it's too busy. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, it's great. It's great for tourism and stuff. But um, to me, yeah, I, I would like to see the village of Videx step up a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I can't comment on, on what the village, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm pleased that they decided to contribute to what they have. So. It is thirty thousand dollars, and but could we go back to them and ask them? Uh, I would say that's probably the maximum amount that they they can offer, and I, I can't speak for them, but that would be my my thoughts. It just by economy of scale. Any further, Councillor McDonald? I'm in I'm in favor of it, and I think that it's uh, vital to the tourism and everything. But I'm just curious with the gas tax fund that we receive, is any of that portion coming into the portion that's released to the village from Victoria County? So we haven't made a motion to um, spend any of our gas tax on that? No, but we, last week when we discussed that they received, was it 64,000? Yeah, is there in there 60? So is yep. any of that coming mm -hmm. from that if we pass? I think that they said they no, no, that it's not. That's no. Yeah. It's coming from general just, revenue. Just yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. He didn't go further to say where it was that they were going to generate that money from, but he verified that no, it's not gas tax money. Just one other question. Okay. The same, Mike. The village says they need the money right away. But okay, how are they going to bridge this? Because it's over three years to get the money from Victoria County. If they need it right away, yeah. I think they'd look for. Yeah, he also had noted that um, a letter of a letter, a guaranteed oh, letter, or a, a guaranteed letter of support letter. Okay. would work also. Um, okay. And I said I wasn't doing that without him coming to council. So. Okay. Yep. Any other further discussion, Councilor McLeod? Uh, I'm agree with give it to them. Uh, like I said. Is that three hundred thousand dollars they're coming? Uh, yeah, it's late. Like I didn't know that, but uh, uh, it's an open door. The board, the, the wharf here to all Victoria County. They can maybe spend one or two days here, and they go to the Cabo Trail, and they go in Goniche, they go everywhere. So it's a lot. The boats are coming. It's about the people wants to come and give them, you know. A, a nice place to walk and just spend time and then they can move to the north. I think it's a, it's a good investment. And really we, in 2023, like I really, we need a good infrastructure for here. Thank you for your comments. And I, I think if I, the last comment I would make is that we've seen our municipality up until the last couple of years and this community as well could start to fall back uh, and lose stature to other municipalities that have invested in their municipalities. And I think this is one way, and I understand what you're saying, Council Oregon, yes, it's it's located in Bedeck, but I think it'll benefit all of Victoria County for sure. So having said that, uh, the motion has been made. Um, we need to vote on it. All in favor of uh, the motion signify contrary minded. Motion's carried. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to move on to the next item, which is a grant that we have. And you know what? I'm going to separate, uh, just say that I'm in a, uh, I'm the treasurer of this organization. So I'm going to step out uh, while this discussion. So if you, declaring you conflict? I am declaring conflict, turn it over to the deputy warden and uh, just send me a text when you're done. Okay. You <laughs> okay, so this one is an application that came in from Vedek Nordic Club. We talked about it at our grants discussion. Um, it was sent to the Trails Department. Uh, trails Department looked at it 
Uh, the first concern is that it's on private land and it is membership based, so it doesn't meet um, the, the trails groups um, parameters for awarding grants. Um, we're not sure if there's an easement in place currently. Uh, so there's a couple of couple of flags for us. Uh, the application was for, however, um, the, the total project cost on here says that it's $10,000 and that's what um, we've used and we went with the capital approach where in, in the trails group where it's at one third that capital gets funded. So the trails group has given, has granted 3333 to this, um, to this group. Um, it was discussed with the president of the of the group of the Bedeck Nordic Club. They say they are actually looking for their ask is for ten thousand because it's a thirty thousand dollar project. Even though it says the funds in the amount of ten thousand are requested to support trail development and says the total pro project cost is ten thousand, but they have donated equipment and donated labor in here, which they've put down below as their contribution for. 19,000 so they're saying it's a $30,000 project and looking for 10,000 so council thoughts on that so do we need a motion on the floor first probably yeah do anyone want to make a motion on that one i uh, make the motion for to uh, to, to grant them 10, to grant to that the three is 3000 not 3333 10, 10,000 oh we go for the 10 yeah we'll we'll make the motion for the 10,000 oh we got right i make a motion for the 10,000 i'll second it Okay, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Signify saying aye. Just discussion first. Yes. Oh, don't, sorry, discussion first. Yep. Uh, I just just to tell it's in my district. Uh, it's in uh, in the loop of the Bedak. Um, coming um, there's some it's country ski. Uh, they come in for everywhere. We have uh, a few from people from Sydney or Sydney. They're coming for looking for. Uh, you know, to do that in the winter time. Um, it's a new group, and I'm just picking a favor of helping them to start running that. I know it's in a private land, but it's a beautiful scenery, and I'm pretty sure they will have some easement with her, but uh, I can confirm. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a new group to start. Uh, anybody else? Thank you, Good Councilor Patterson. Uh, Leanne, I'm, I'm still not clear what, what they're going to do. You mentioned trail development, but, but I understand is the trail development on private land and this is something about a parking lot too that, that's in there or am I wrong about that? Yeah, you can park there, right, sir. Funds okay. will be used to support maintenance of existing trails and yeah. new trail construction. Existing trails haven't been used much in the last 15 years have overgrown. Um, our aim is to create an outdoor ski and snowshoe facility, uh, but in some areas, new trails will be constructed to provide connectivity across the trail system. Anybody else with comments? Uh, yeah, just uh, like we had this at our grant meeting and then it got put off to trails because it was about trails and now it's come back again. But everything that was on the table at that time was cut because we had twice as many requests as we had money. So everybody had to have a cut. So I think that we should give them more since they don't fit into the trail, but not the whole amount. Anybody else? Just one quick one. Yep, Mr. McConnell, Councilor McConnell. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did read the, the grant application when it came out. So the, the piece that the Council McConnell said is, is on private land with the parking area space. So we're, if we were to grant said amount of dollars, shouldn't, does there have to be legal involved there? Or? Definitely. So I have a, I have a really concern with that. But all the trails in for snowmobiles they're in private line. When you go in the trails in the snowmobile and everything, you cross in private line. I know that. Like and the, the Nordic. It just make sure if they have easement with them, that will make it legal. Yeah, with the Nordic Center home though, they all had to have provide easements from each landowner. Yeah. 
I'm Patrick. pretty sure you have to have it, but uh, but no disrespect. I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's something we should in consideration. If uh, maybe granted, if they have the easement, it's legal. It's go. It's a go. If they don't have the easement, well, will be cancel, right? Um, so Dan's going to comment. And just way. if I could, lastly, before Dan takes the floor with and not to uh, with the the ski trail home, it was uh was put to trails. They asked for a minimum amount of 3,000. They got reduced to 800 and some dollars, which went back to council. I just want to make sure that that's, uh, that's put there, okay? And then my only issue is that with the private land thing, if, if there's legal that should be involved, we should get that cleared up. It's not ours to clean up either. Exactly. So, yeah. But, but I think if there's not an easement on the land, like we shouldn't be financing work to be done on private property. I mean, exactly. I mean right. there has it's to be an easement, so. Maybe we'll, what's the motion we have now? That ten thousand to to grant the ten thousand. Yeah. So maybe Dan, you have some comments. <clears throat> Just uh, uh, to from the perspective of the trails committee, when we discussed the the application in regards to this, the the membership base was one issue, obviously because the we the trails mandate for the trails funding for granting groups is for full access, and it's all about full access to any of our residents for so that the snowmobile clubs and the ATV club trails, they're fully accessible by any other group, even if you don't have a membership. Um, the land use part, I think we raised that as a flag and it wasn't really a determining factor. It was more of a condition. It was, if they have a formal easement in place, we could consider the funding. Mm -hmm. When you apply, when we do our multi-use trails program and apply for ACOA grants or, or Community Culture and Heritage Trails grants, they require the easement in place in, in advance. So that's why we looked, looked at that as a condition and that's why it came up in this. So uh, we can't, nobody would have, would give funding outside of, of uh, our trails group. Uh, so we couldn't leverage that. So the goal of our funding is always to leverage other funding. If they don't have trail easements in place, they're not gonna get other funding, then it wouldn't be leveraged. So that was the, the decision mm -hmm. on that. Did uh, the trails give 3,300 though or none? We When we looked at what they were asking to do, we felt that that, that there was some stuff that was pertinent to trails so there was that was would have been the consideration when we broke down the work i think in uh in how it laid so 3300 was what we had considered as as the maximum we would consider for that uh, yeah any other discussion the i'll let the move be table this till we get further information we can do that or also, so what is, what further information it's not, debatable. it's not debatable what the table i'm not asking for i'm not asking to debate i'm asking what further information you're requesting the, the easement situation that dan just described okay that they provide that information that the easement is, is available yeah. so it's been motioned well i guess first we have to uh no, motion table. is it okay so motion table I have seconded by councillor mcneil all in favor all right all right, so the motion has been passed. It has been tabled. Okay, so there's a uh, text word. I just that. have a, a comment and I just follow for Barb. Uh, for maybe the next time we have grants, uh, instead, you know, it's just, uh, just forward to trails. Maybe we have more information what the trail community wants to have it, or maybe they can see it first and then at least help us to say it's not going to pass in the trails. And that way we will have to make this this uh, motion mm -hmm. yeah. and that way we know it's here or there and then we can discuss in that moment yep, yep. yep. i think yeah okay uh so i'm just waiting for him to come back um but there is another one <laughs> there's one other one um, related to Crowdis Mountain. Dan, you might want to discuss that also. It was the Crowdis Mountain Snowmobile Club. There was one, there, uh, there was one, so, so they had three asks. Um, there was one for operational. The amount requested was $10,000. There was 5,000 that was approved through the trails grant. And because it's, it's supporting ongoing activities. Um, and then just thought to send, they were looking for 10. So just wondering if the other five, if you're interested in putting that through operational, through operational grants. I guess I'll add a quick perspective ahead of time. The looking at that, we, I think there was in a, 
we agreed to five, I think, in that, was yeah. it? Um, so there was the funding for nonprofit groups was set up to be either uh, development of a new trail, maintenance of an existing trail, or marketing and promotion or mapping was the grand scheme of that. So operations didn't fit into that. And I think it was that way because we didn't, once you get into the operations of a groomer, for example, you're talking $20,000 a year in gas. And if we did that for all the snowmobile clubs, no clubs that have not non-motorized trails or no groups that are trying to develop a new trail will have money left. So our intent was never to get into the operational side and where they were applying for operations, we felt that that wasn't applicable for the trails program. Looking at some of what, the, what they did apply for was uh, trail, I think, development based. So that's where the 5,000 came in um, rather than 10,000 for operations. We felt that what they were proposing was 5,000 operations and 5,000 in, in actual improvement of the trails. That's why the 5,000 was approved. That makes sense. No, we, we gave them half of one and then a third of the other one. There was another, uh, they applied for 20, 10,000, I think, or 20,000. And a third of that would have been the 66, yeah, $6,666 was approved for that one because they're only eligible for a third of, of the overall total cost. Approved for the 66.60 and also for 5,000. And then and there, there was, was a $3,000 dollar that was that was through our that they applied directly to the trails group for maintenance. So that was, was trail repair. Yeah, that was yeah. a trail repair. Okay. How much did they get? They got uh, about 14, six, 14, five. How much did they ask? How much was What's their original request? Well, 30 30 requests. Yeah, 30, 33 with the trail with the maintenance, I think. This is Crowders Mountain? Yes. So they asked for 33 in total. I believe, yeah. And how much did they get in reality? Uh, five, six, 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 six. Seven. They got almost 50% of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 3,000 for repair. So fifteen six six six. Three thousand for a repair of a trail. So fifteen thousand, pretty much. So I get thirteen one and the fourteen. Is that fourteen six six? Yes, yeah, so I got here. Fourteen six six. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm just sorry. I just came in late. So. Yeah. Um, Dan, I, I, the uh, what do you call it? English Snowmobile Society. That one was put over. Also, did they receive any funding? Because okay, perfect. New trail development. Yeah. They were some operation costs. Exactly. Yeah, and their their project costs are seventy six thousand. Yeah. No, even Crowders Mountain grants that that were the project. The total project of those three was seventy six thousand. Okay. So right, right now, is it, uh, is it looking for 10,000 or is it looking for five? So all we're discussing right now is 5,000. Yes. So I'm, I'm just good trying to get a where, because I just walked in the room. So we're talking Crowders Mountain and the request is an additional 5,000. Is that what you're? Yes, because the, the grant should not have been pushed to trails because it's not it doesn't meet the parameters over there. So it's ongoing, it's support for operations of the, of the trail groomer. Okay, trail. so this 5,000 would be in addition to the 14,650 yes. they received. That's, that's the question. So, and we're heavily invested in trails. So well, what's- you said there was a $76,000 altogether was the ask, is that what you said? No, that's, that's their project. project. Oh, okay. The, the project. Yeah, but they asked for 30,000. Yes, which is within the parameters of where grants would be as a max that they could ask for. And then, yeah. So the, the, the issue at hand is are we going to give them, give them an additional $5,000 based on that grant came back from the trails group back to council. And the say operation, what is they talking about just for the rumor? They want the money for this for operate operation. operation. So do we we have to have a motion to get this on the at the, on the table? So does somebody do would somebody wish to make the motion? Yeah. 
Yeah, we have to, have, that's where I'm going with this. And we need a motion to approve the $5,000, additional $5,000 to the Crowders Mountain Snowmobile Club. We need that in a motion so we can vote on it. That has been moved by Councillor Longa. Do we have a seconder? Second by Councillor McLeod. So the motion is we provide an initial $5,000 to Crowders Mountain Survey. All in favor of the request. Do we do discussion first? Sorry, I thought I'm just because I came in late, I thought you had the discussion. Any further discussion on the motion will go to Councillor Oregon and then to the Deputy Warden. Councillor Long. Or I'm sorry, Councillor Oregon. My apologies. <laughs> you um, you had a comment or two? I just I just I just feel I know trails are important and everything, but I'm so is a lot of other grants that we have put on the table that people put in. We've cut everybody. And uh, I I will be voting against the extra five thousand dollars. Okay. Crowds. Thank you. Anybody else want to? Offer? Deputy Warden. It's probably one of our biggest, one of our main things that we want to see done. Um, but again, again, it gets back to organizations asking for grants under three different platforms, and I, and I think there's a lot of organizations out there they apply for one. And they don't apply for three, they apply for one and hopefully get one. But I think we're getting into the thing of everyone's gonna start applying for three. And I think we gotta have a limit somewhere. So like Council Oregon, as much as I think they did, they did get 14,600, which is more than most other groups got. Uh, I'm happy with what they've received already. Okay, any other discussion? Councilor McDonald. No, just, just the same thing to reiterate what the other two councilors said and Deputy Warden. Except there was three asked put in. I know the new new group in my district there with North Waves Development Society, they put in for the three grants totaling thirty thousand as well. They were granted granted ten thousand by council, and they're very grateful for that. And I appreciate council considering that. So I also agree that they asked that was granted to the crowd. It should be they should be pleased with that. Okay. And that's, that's Thank you it. for your comments, Councillor Patterson. Were you going to chime in? Oh, no, I just, before I, could I make it just, uh, the only concern I have is that I, I, if, if this one didn't go over to trails and then came back, would it change their value that we put on it? You know what I'm saying? Because it, we asked trails to look at it and give it consideration. Had we had had that review of their applications that day, would it have changed the way we're looking at it now? So from that perspective that's how i will be voting so the motion has been called we need the vote sorry i just had one more question does the groomer go north too like does it do north of smoky as well as up this end nothing does all the trails here oh, okay yeah, sorry dan but there's nothing there's actually three groomers. So okay. uh, English Snowmobile Society has one groomer. Cabot Snowmobile Society has another. They do Rec Cove and North and down into St. Anne's. And then Crowdus Mountain does all the trails in around Bedeck area. So they yeah. only represent that one area. Yeah, and most things that hit the table that day were cut, almost cut in half uh, because we only had so much money and twice as many asks. Yep. So we are prepared to vote so who is uh, all those in favor of providing an additional five thousand dollars to crowdus mountain snowmobile club do we have three okay uh contrary or against five so the motion is defeated so thank you for voting thank you for the discussion and we're going to move on um now we're going to move into the local improvement charge bylaw this is the first reading Turn it over to Leanne, take the lead on this particular. Uh, there's not really a lead. Um, we've all had, we've, we've been bouncing this around for a long time. Uh, sent a copy off to you a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, oh no, I guess it was, yeah, probably two, three weeks ago. I uh, invited comments back. Uh, we've had some Zoom sessions on it. We've had some committee of the whole meetings on it. We've had some uh, sessions. Uh, so I'm, I'm recommending based on uh, things that we are working on and without having a local improvement charge bylaw in place, you can't make a decision on charging or not charging without it in place. So I'm recommending that uh, this local improvement charge go through. 
So again, you've heard the recommendation from the CAO. Again, we need to have a motion to accept the first reading and then we will vote on it. So we've had extensive uh, conversations around this particular bylaw. So uh, somebody want to make a motion to approve the first reading of the local improvement charge bylaw. Thank you, Councillor McNeil. Do we have a seconder, please? Second. Seconded by Councillor McLeod. We're gonna have discussion, yeah. You have to get the motion approved. So all in favor? Contrary, so any, mo any discussion on the motion and you, you had a comment that you wanted to make? Is your mic on, please? Initially, I, I, I wasn't really for this this motion, but uh, now seeing that the projects in Little Maris that could be coming up in around my area, it's a way to get a project started. I think that now people can vote to have a, a project started in the area. If we don't vote, if we don't go ahead with this, I can't see. Little Nair is extending the water anywhere. So uh, that, okay. that's it. That's my opinion. Okay. Uh, like, I, I can't see pro smaller projects in in, uh, in districts going ahead. Now, like with this motion, uh, this residents can vote to have a project go ahead. So, uh, it, would be a good thing for, for I think all this. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comment. I have a comment. Uh, we're going to uh, Councillor Morgan, please. Uh, with this uh, bylaw, can we have more community discussion, like to bring it up with the uh, community members? More so, I mean, we're getting a little bit of flack with this uh, levy one, so uh, put it up there more. I don't know how we're gonna do that, but so we 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 had a session in everyone's district. Uh, in a good one, yeah. Um, yes, we we will do all the communication that we are required to do, plus more, and then whenever there is a project. So so right now, there's no projects attached to this. This is just to get it in place. When there are projects affecting areas, it will be, there will be community engagement. Yeah, so um, the community engagement piece at this point is actually with you guys, because you're making the decision on passing this or not. But we did, we did do some, we did it with municipal boundaries and we did it um, when we did our, our a road show. Yeah. And, uh, we had, a, we had people, we had people for it. We had people against it. And then when it was discussed with them, some actually changed their, their opinion to, uh, to being for it. There'll be a second reading of it as oh, well. Yes. So yep. there would be a public hearing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So there, to, to your point, there will be a second reading, which yep. would be similar. We'll have a public hearing, so there will be uh, an opportunity. And we mentioned that we might have a hearing different locations. Did we talked about that at one point? Did we not, or did we didn't? But we want to have the discussion across the municipality. If, if it's in place, and there's projects that go on, we do we do community consultations. consultations. Yeah. Is this draft on? the website now no because no. our process is you got we're not putting anything public until you guys are good with what this looks like and then then we take it out to the public so this is your when does it go to the public then if we vote yes today then it's going to be posted on the website so just like the last marketing bylaw mm -hmm. the draft bylaw is available we do the, our advertising, we get the message out there. The draft marketing bylaw has been on our website. Mm -hmm. It will be available the same way. This is this okay. is just passing a bylaw the same as the last bylaw that you just passed. Same process. Yeah, and how long before the second reading will happen? So we have to post it in the paper two weeks before we do a second reading. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So Deputy Ward. In between the this reading and the and the second reading, the final reading or whatever, can we do we still do have the option of making some changes to it? Or do we cannot make changes? Oh, I think you can make changes, but yeah. I, nobody had any changes in the last three weeks. Well, no, I, I, I had, actually I had some, but I was waiting for the, I should have sent them in to you. It's nothing serious, but anyway, there's a couple couple of things. I still find just certain to, things. Just if I could, Warden, as, as I understand it, and I could be wrong, the, the, the first reading is today. That's basically, here it is. Right? To get it on the floor. It's actually non-debatable, I, I think. But anyway, the second reading is the time. And at the, the public hearing, somebody may come in from the public hearing and say, this is, you know, all has to be changed. Then yep. we have to reconsider that. You can make amendments to, to what is there. But that's kind of the starting document. That's where we're starting from. And people can read it and they can decide okay. if they like it or don't like it or what they want to change or whatever. So. so it's the starting document of the governance piece of it. We've gone over it several times to get it to this place. Yep. So. Is it a possibility that we can put it on Facebook? Actually, on our municipal site? Actually, put it, you say it's on our website anyway, so it's, yeah. it's so out there, but it'd be nice to actually put it on Facebook. This is being considered past first reading. <laughs> and that way, people are more aware of it because right now, nobody's going to the website and looking at it. And yes, it's their responsibility to know yep. these things, but this is a pretty serious one. And, and yep. I'd, I'd, I'd so, just like to have it the actual draft put up on the thing for people to read. So we're, we're not doing anything until we get a first reading. Yeah, pass. exactly. Yep. And then, yep, yep then yep. we will have, we'll have more engagement. Yep. We've got a communications person who can Perfect. help us with this. May I ask a question? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What just that the residents had a chance to actually read it. Because right now, like I've talked to a number of people in my community and I try to explain it to them and they're like, not interested. Uh, you know, for example. So, so provide a link on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. Can people can access it? Yeah, so this, is the this is actually what we need to buy. Yeah. Yeah. And we can share it. And we can share it. Yeah. This passes first reading. Well, exactly. Well, that's why I say, as long as they have a link going to Facebook. Yeah. All right. So, and, and the other point, just for clarity about the hearing, it doesn't have to be here in Padek. It could be in Inganish. It could be in Cape North. It could be in Dingwall. It could be back over Iona. So it's the just two billion. That point, Warden, I think it's important that we kind of target the areas that have uh, services now. Like it, it's not likely to affect. The people of Bulletry in yeah. the next, I don't know how many years, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're not going to take much of an interest. We would select the but location. The areas where there is water and sewer now, yeah. I think there's going to be or questions to be. and interest. Yeah. That's right. And I, I don't want to say we're going to have it in Inganish, but potentially we could with the potential development that could be there and the potential of sewer and water extension down there. That to me would be the ideal test to see. So, but we haven't made that decision. We have to get as to go back to what the CAO said. We have to pass this first reading before we finalize any of that planning. Any further discussion, Councillor McDonald? It's a quick one when there with the municipal act. It states the the processes of posting for public consultation, and I, it seemed when there's no papers. Furthermore, north anyway. I don't know if they still have them in. So, I seen one in Sydney like there a week ago. So what is the? Shouldn't that be? It's on. Yeah, yeah, you can get it digitally, but um, so that was the, a dark computer savvy. Yeah. The, so the the province hasn't updated the municipal government act in several years, and this is one of the areas which is an issue. Um, but we can't change that. So until that is changed. Because comments have gone into the, the province about this, that there's no such thing as a paper and nobody reads a paper. And uh, what kind of postage means postage to send out a final bill? Because you can email somebody their, their bill now. Don't know if that qualifies. So there's like wording that has to change. But until that changes, we still only have to meet those minimum qualifications. Not that we're only going to do the minimum, but, but you only have to post it in a paper. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So are we good? Are we ready to vote? 
So, um, would somebody like to make a motion that uh, we will approve the first reading of the local improvement charge bylaw? You made it moved by Councillor McNeil. Uh, we we made the motion. Sorry. So, are we ready to vote? All in favor of the first reading of the local improvement charge bylaw? So it's unanimous. Any opposed? Okay, so that gives CAO direction on that one. We're going to move on now to correspondence. It's been all sent out. Thank you very much. We got a lot of that today. Committee reports. Uh, um, yes, Councillor McLeod. I just wondered if we can arrange a meeting for BCT meeting. Um, if it could be in Zoom or, or uh, in person. In person will be if you okay the 22 or 23 but if not soon before in that yeah how about you let us know when works for you okay. um if it's later in the week or uh whenever works for you and then we'll set up a zoom call for that um yeah. to go over and i believe everyone's on the board I got all around mm. that board yeah we're all trained yeah. okay okay thank you thank you for bringing that up counselor and um, sorry, committee reports, Councillor Morgan. <laughs> Do we uh, uh, receive any notice about our a meeting with the police? Yeah. So Steph sent a note out today, and we're trying to decide on a date. So check your email. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Leave. Um, I've had a couple of requests in the last couple of months for things to provide for tournaments and stuff like that. And also we noticed when we were away at the FCM, um, everyone has nice county t-shirts or jackets. And I know it's like Dorman, we were never down to where the one blue one that has four or five poles in it and stuff, but I'd like to make a motion that we purchase some merchandise that we can provide for council and staff and also for tournaments, that kind of stuff. A very good, excellent idea. That's seconded by Councillor Longa, Councillor Horgan. Unanimous again, um, very good. And uh, I will, uh, I, I know uh, Steph has a, a document or a catalog of some kind. So we'll let you guys uh, sort out what it is we want. And maybe if uh, you take a look through there and if you see it's something appropriate, but we're thinking some apparel shirts and it's also nice as we used to do previously, some of the presenters would come in and provide it. You know, be, it'd be things like the biggest thing is like a lot of times, like there's tournaments, golf tournaments coming up. Does the county have anything you can provide as a prize? And before we always had t shirts to give out, and that's when we're really big. So it's like a bunch of t shirts and then golf shirts or whatever. Yeah. Golf shirts or, yeah. 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 So I, I just take a look through and see what. Uh, Councillor Longa. Uh, I just uh, uh, left to say on my district concerns, but I'd like to wish a happy 59 year tough people anniversary to Angus and Marion McCaskill from Englishtown. Oh, nice. 59 years. Wow. Well done. Apparently, he doesn't say much. Okay, just one sec. Just, so, anybody else, Councillor McNeil, just going to have the floor in a sec. Anything else? Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Councillor McNeil, sorry. Just one other committee. Is your mic on? Thank Just you. one other committee report. Uh, the Offshore Wind Street Area Task Force met on May 9th, and I think they're meeting again tomorrow. Uh, it's usually virtual. Uh, I'm, I'll send out the, the minutes of the meeting to everybody. So they can, it's basically a lot to do up, up in the street area. I'll send out so everybody knows Thank you. what's going on. Anything else? Yes, sir. I, I just uh, touch on Councillor McNeil's uh, earlier in regard to the littering signs. I actually had that for my area as well. And Steve McDonald just responded back that he'll discuss with Bernie Murphy in regard for the signs. And it's not the province's problem, but we don't sign every row for littering. So I don't know if that, that the provincial government doesn't sign every row for littering. So I think that's, especially if he sent into Bernie Murphy, there's a, a solid answer for council. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'd be better off save our time and energy and get our own signs and have our own 
I don't know how that works. I won't go any further down that road. Uh, just one last item. I, uh, under committee reports, I had a chance to go to the SEPI Leadership Committee uh, last week, and uh, Councillor McNeil uh, was recognized for his role as chair and as he's stepping down. So we want to recognize and thank you on behalf of the municipality for the leadership you showed in that committee. So both you and Dan Christmas as co-chair. So thank you for doing that. Well done. Uh, do we... Uh, do you have any correspondence been done? Committee reports been done? Any questions from the public? No. Um, just one last item. We have, and I, we haven't selected any dates for July or August. Two things. One is we have some unsightly premise issues that we have to, uh, if any of the orders are going to be, and I'm not sure how this process works, but it has to come back to council. So if we are looking at timelines, maybe uh, a virtual meeting of council to deal with one of these issues so that we're not these properties if we let it go a month it's just gonna so just i'm kind of giving you a heads up if you get a notice and then before the 20th of june uh, because i'm going to be away for a week i'd like to try to address that issue before i go and then we're not into july august because we're we have to deal with this issue how many do we have pending two uh two for two. sure yeah. yep and potentially three, there's one north too, but if those orders, they have to come to council, we have to give them a deadline. So we would be prepared for a virtual meeting. And as long as we have a quorum, that's what's important. Um, the other issue is we have not selected dates for July or August. If you guys are okay with it, like once one meeting a month, and I will sit down with Steph and Leanne and we'll figure out is anybody going away for an extended period of time? So we want to uh, work to, so it works for everybody. I'll sit down with Leanne and Steph and uh, we'll get the input required to get those dates. The last question I have for you and Deputy Warden brought this up and it's a key point. You like in two o'clock or do you want five o'clock? Okay. What about you? I like the two o'clock. So if if we well let's let let's do July at five o'clock. Okay. And the other uh, item is are you guys okay with that? I shouldn't assume. The other issue is that we uh, would probably look for a location. Um, You'd mentioned maybe down your way on in July before the 15th. <laughs> Set. Yes, sir. We're at your, we're at your beck and call. Yep. No, we'll, we'll work around whatever schedule you have. We had, we had, we had mentioned it. We didn't discuss it. We had mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, just to see, because I know some people have other demands and in the winter, it hasn't been an issue. Well, and... wage. Wage is still in. well you can send it in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else coming to council this afternoon? So we'll get back to you for the dates in July. We'll be meeting one time and just again, forewarned that we may meet virtually to deal with those other issues before the end of June. We have a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for your time this afternoon. It was a long session. Thank you. On a hot day. August 19th. Did you put in your calendar, Lair? Hmm? August 19th. Oh. And that's a that's a good one. Dan, are you able to check this out? Uh, I don't know what that Yeah.